to the delight of Oriole fans, they kept that winning streak going. Steve Pierce filling in for Chris Davis at first base is doing more than filling in. Stayed hot the home run. Manny Machado, his first homer of the season, and another big two-out RBI for Jonathan Scope. Tonight, the Orioles and Astros in game two, and the O's try and keep it going at a plus five. And for the O's, a successful return home last night. Another big crowd will be on hand here in this Saturday night for game two, the Astros and the Orioles. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and welcome for the first time this year. The Orioles are five games above 500, and that's what you try and do in the course of a season. First five, then 10, then 15, and the next thing you know, you're in pretty good shape. The Orioles come in a half game ahead of the Yankees for the division lead coming into this ball game tonight. And one of those who has really helped the cause with Chris Davis out now on rehab today Steve Pierce has been at first base and he has done an astounding job the Orioles almost lost him to free agency in the four game hit streak he's got going three home runs in those four games four RBIs and a 385 batting average and he has played some outstanding defense at first base his natural position Steve Pierce will be back at that job tonight Mike Gordick. yeah I'll tell you what he has been on fire here recently Recently, but 275 on the year since he filled in at first base 300 but he has been riding a wave of confidence I mean you saw the numbers there three home runs in the last four games Orioles on a four game win streak due in large part by Steve Pierce's contributions both offensively and defensively not an error yet this season at first base and he's actually helped save some errors over there with some fine picks and as we'll talk about tonight interesting thing happening to the Orioles starters while they continue to try and get deep into games and Wei and Chen certainly did that last night through seven even when they're pitching five and a third five and two thirds they're putting up a solid ERA well they really are you know what they're avoiding the big innings it really hurt them early on in the season they'd like to get deeper but they're avoiding those big crooked numbers that can hurt them Miguel Gonzalez is going to be on the mound to make the start here in game two against the Astros yet another one run win in the ball game last night game two the Astros and the Orioles when we come back
Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at Southwest.com. And by Chapin Davis. Chapin Davis providing investments that can produce income for your retirement plan. Call to learn more at 800-222-3246 or at ChapinDavis.com. Thunderstorms in the area today. Both teams able to get batting practice in, though. Take a look at our train game time temperature. We're at 75 degrees to start this one. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. And here's a look at the starting lineup. It'll be changed here with a right-hander starting for the Orioles with a lefty last night. Altuve, Fowler, Castro did not play last night. Dominguez, Presley, and Springer. Presley did not play last night. Carter, Kraus, and Villar. Kraus did not start last night. Chris Carter did have the home run in the ballgame. And here's a look at Miguel Gonzalez's pitch arsenal this season. He's using his fastball 62% of the time, that breaking ball 22%, and the changeup at 16%. Well, it's a split finger changeup. Miguel Gonzalez really relying on fastball efficiency. He's got to be able to throw that for strikes to help his secondary pitches. See the numbers on the year. Six starts, 5-2-8 earned run average. Opponents hitting 287. Lefty's just 221, and the righty's way up to 370. Miguel looking to be more efficient in this ball game in his last start. Four walks really jacked up that pitch count, and he had an early exit, four and two thirds in the last start. Back show, Walter. What a busy uh, 24, 36 hours he's had. The skipper just getting back in time for the ball game. Went to see his son's graduation. Or Nathaniel at TCU flew out at midnight last night. Had to make a speech at the breakfast this morning. Went to the graduation that was at 10 o'clock. Got back on the plane. Came back. Wow. <laughs> busy man. So back uh, in time for the ball game, and I think he literally just walked out into the dugout. He was he was not here for any of the pregame stuff. All right, we are ready to go. Altuve will lead it off. There's second baseman, the speedster on this team. And Gonzalez's delivery to him. That'll be taken for a strike, and we are underway. There you see the Altuve's numbers on the year. They won for four. He has reached safely in 30 out of 36 games this season. Gonzalez's delivery to him in the 0-1, a slider that's going to be up and away, one ball, one strike. Well, pretty important that Miguel Gonzalez handles Altuve uh, real good at stealing bases, 11 stolen bases on the year. This Astros lineup, you know, they haven't put up tremendous numbers, but very dangerous with the long ball. If they get guys on base, they can hurt you. Jones is there. He will haul it in. Altuve puts it away. And let's take a look at the Orioles defense brought to you by Chevrolet. Nelson Cruz back in left field. This is his sixth straight start in left field after early in the season. Buck Showalter alternating between left and DH. Jones in center. Marquecas in right. Hardy and Scope up the middle. Machado and Pierce on the corners with Clevenger once again back behind the plate. For the Orioles, they come in tied for second in defense. They've committed uh, 17 errors, allowing eight unearned runs. Here is Dexter Fowler. Fowler with a one for four in the ball game last night. A little number off the end of the bat. Machado, let's see it, man. He did. He got him. Two down. <laughs> so good at the slow roller play. Got himself in a good position. Really didn't rush it. Created the right angle. Take a look here. See him surround that baseball. Get his shoulder squared up and just a quick transfer and strong throw by the Platinum Glover. So two quick outs and Gonzalez the chance to have one of those one two three innings. He has averaged uh, about 18 pitches per innings pitch this season would like to get that down to uh, 16 where he'd like to be. But if he could knock off a pitch an inning that would help the cause. Standing in is Castro Castro's four for five with a home run lifetime off Gonzalez and Castro will take the pitch down low for a ball. So Castro getting the start because he's hit the Oriole starter as he gets the work behind the plate. Orioles defense will shift right now. They shift moving uh, pulling playing him to pull in the infield and Gonzalez in the off speed delivery fouls it back one ball and one strike. Well there's a look at that big shift Jonathan scope playing the shallow right field Orioles have implemented this a lot on the strong left handed hitters J.J. Hardy over on the second base side. Manny Machado, he's responsible for the whole left side of the infield. One ball, one strike count. Jason Castro. 
And the delivery to him and that will just miss outside. Again we have the reverse numbers with Gonzalez that we've talked about so much this year. That the left handers have hit 221 as Mike said and right handers 370. How come? We see that more and more this season where what where the reverse of what's supposed to be as far as righties lefties pitchers hitters and a swing and a miss he just bore that one by him two and two. Yeah real good two seam fastball from Miguel. You know a lot of times Miguel has the good success off the lefties because his split finger change fades down and away to the lefties. He's going to get weak contact there. If he's on with that pitch he's going to have a lot of success righties and it drops down into the sweet spot. Always comes back to that change up this year. When we talk about that. That that's the difference. Two two delivery and a swing and a miss. Perfectly located. And a one two three start for Miguel Gonzalez. The Orioles lineup coming up. We'd like to welcome those of you watching from Brunswick, Maryland, where the Appalachian Mountains on the Potomac River meet in the heart of that beautiful valley, all part of Birdland. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Orioles brought to you by Southwest Airlines. You find them online only at Southwest.com. Marquegas, Machado, and Cruz, Jones, Weeders, and Hardy, Clevenger, Pierce, and Scope. Manny last night, first extra base hit here in his home yard, a homer. And here's a look at the pitch arsenal for Colin McHugh. Fastball used at 50% of the time. Breaking ball, he's got a curve and a slider. Really likes the slider on both lefties and righties 45% of the time. And an occasional changeup. Now McHugh, a pretty interesting season here. Two and one record. Low earned run average at 279. 23 strikeouts, just four base on balls. Well, his first two starts were unbelievable. 15 and third innings had 19 strikeouts and just one earned run. His last Last start, he got roughed up a bit. Six runs, eight hits, and four innings of work. He beat Seattle and Oakland, and then the last start was against Seattle again. Nick Marquez will follow back. Nick with a 16 game hit streak coming in. Great night last night as he ended up with the three for four in the ball game. Nick uh, hitting 354 during the hit streak, and he's been on in 19 of the last 20 ball games. And putting the ball all over the diamond. That one down to first probably shattered the bat, and it is a foul ball. That's that slider right there. He loves to run it in on the lefties, try to get that weak contact. McHugh's interesting, 26 years old. He was all over baseball creation last year as he had parts of uh, the last three seasons have included the Mets, the Rockies, and the Astros. Houston picked him up in the offseason on a waiver claim. From Colorado. Last year, seven appearances, five starts for the Rockies and the Mets. The rest of it he spent at Triple uh, A baseball. 0 2 delivery, that'll be fouled back into the screen. And the count will go to 0 and 2. One of the things for him this year is he's never been a power pitcher. This year, though, he's been up to 93, 94 miles an hour, which is for him three or four miles an hour higher than he's pitched in the past. Yeah, holding some pretty good velocity. 
And uh, along with that slider, he looks to go to the curveball for the strikeout pitch primarily, but yeah, finding extra uh, v -lows. Look at this. Another first at bat hit. Unbelievable. Arcakis has got a 17 game hit streak, and for most of it, this is what he's done. Continued it with his first at bat. Yeah, he has been on fire. 17 game hitting streak. Pretty tough pitch. Two strikes down in the zone. Stayed over the plate just enough for him to get to it. And he has been on fire. Take a look here. Current hitting streaks. Nick Markick is on top with 17 consecutive games. Brantley's got nine. Rasmus, nine. Jackson, seven. So Nick on at first base, and that'll bring up Manny Machado, a home run in the ball game last night, part of his one for four. Hughes delivery, and that'll be taken inside for a ball. So Manny's starting to get the uh, number of reps at the plate, plate that he needs. Feel as though he's uh, in full swing. Only his ninth game, he's only had 31 at bats. Home run, one RBI, one O count. And Machado will take the pitch and it'll miss down low. And McHugh falls behind on him 2 0. Well, Manny's been trying to get his feet under him here uh, for a little bit, both offensively and defensively. Get the speed of the game back. I mean, the year he had last year was just outstanding, both offensively and defensively. And uh, he's just looking to get the rhythm and timing back in the game. And it is starting to come. 2 0 delivery. Machado will take the pitch inside. So McHugh not close on uh, those three and he falls behind three and oh with Cruz waiting on deck Orioles running up some big numbers against uh, Houston ball club that joined the American League last year the Orioles now lead 11 five all time in the series and they are nine out of ten against Houston here in Baltimore three oh pitch taken it'll be in there for a strike. And the count goes to three and one. McHugh making his uh, first appearance uh, against the Orioles. Last night's got Feldman. Fine job as the starter. Penn, though, could not hang on to the close ball game, although it ended up a one run ball game. He was non decision. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Got the runner trapped. Nick Marquez has caught in a rundown. Villar will chase him back. Cross will chase him back. Already too many throws, and the tag is put on. So a hit and run on. The run worked. The hit didn't, and uh, there's one away. <laughs> well, three-one pitch here. A little cut fastball just to get it off the bat head. Manny gearing up in the three-one count. Nick Marquez is a nice job. Uh, you know, really extending this rundown. The more throws you can make, the more chances there are an opportunity for a miscue. So it'll be a caught stealing for Castro behind the plate with assistance on the 2 4 Altuve 3 to Kraus 6 to Villar the shortstop for the tag. And Manny Machado three ball two strike count. And a chopper to short cut off at third. Dominguez's throw is there. And there are two down. Well, let's take a look at the Astros defense behind McHugh tonight. Presley gets the start in left field. Fowler and Springer join him in the outfield. Villar and Altuve up the middle. Dominguez over at third base. Kraus getting the start at first. And Castro back from a bruised forearm once again behind the plate. So McHugh with the help of that caught stealing play has two down nobody on for Nelson Cruz. The old for four in the ball game last night. Cruz will shatter the bat and get a base hit. One part of the barrel ended at third. The ball ended up in right. And the Orioles with a couple of hits in the inning. Cruz on now with two down for Jones. And he continues a hot bat. He had his hit streak ended last night, but he's been putting the ball where they're not, too. Yeah, Nelson Cruz uh, really helped carry the Orioles offensively through the month of April and has stayed consistent. A good start for Cruz tonight. The crew's on and Adam Jones coming up. Adam brings a four game hit streak into the ball game with the 267 average, three home runs on the year, two of those coming during the last road trip at Tampa Bay. Colin McHugh, 26 year old, out of Naperville, Illinois, lives in Atlanta now. 
Two away, not a big lead for Cruz. Jones will take the off speed pitch that fooled him, and it is in there for a strike. Orioles have been picking up a lot of two out runs. No, they sure have. I mean, this month the Orioles 14 two out runs scored. They're behind the Mariners with 19. Indians have 16. Blue Jays 16. Tigers 15. Pretty good number for the Orioles. Clutch hitting with two outs. Came back with a fastball and missed down low with it. One and one. Well, Adam trying to keep the inning alive for Weeders behind him. Orioles have started off this month with a seven and three record. They were 12 and 12 for the first month of play. But off to a really good start here in May a chance for a super month. One one delivery on the way and it's back into the screen and McHugh takes it to one and two. A good pass right there from Adam Jones. There was just a shot of Buck Showalter and Bud Norris and John Russell all side by side talking. Well Bud Norris could be potentially one of the biggest scouts for for John Russell and, and Buck Showalter coming into this series. You know they're picking his brain about tendencies what other pitchers have what he's seen trying to get as much help as possible when you're not as familiar with the team you try to use every available opportunity and the off speed breaking ball is going to be fouled off just got a piece of that one ball two strike count McHugh uh, went to college at Barry College which is in Mount Barry Georgia and became the first player from that school to reach the major leagues. Six year pro, only 15 games in the majors over the last two years prior to this season. One ball, two strike count. Astros hoping that they made a claim off waivers. It's going to be a substantial part of their staff for some years to come. Here's the one two pitch to Jones, and he's gone. Caught the inside corner with a fastball. The Orioles, no runs, two hits, no errors, and one left on base. No score after one. To that first inning, let's uh, pull up our Jeep inside the numbers for you. Yeah, Miguel Gonzalez since July of 2013 at home. He has really been on fire. Four and three with a 268 earned run average. But on the road, some struggles. 12 starts, two and five record with a 537 earned run average. You know, Miguel this season is one and one with a 245 earned run average. So really likes the confines of Camden Yards. Pitching much better. Average for opponents, big difference here at home. They're hitting only 225 off him, no home runs on the road, 317 with all five of the home runs he surrendered having come on the road. Here is Matt Dominguez. Dominguez had a couple of doubles, got himself a, a hit in each of the last four ball games and eight of the last nine. And the pitch will be taken away for a ball. So Dominguez moved into that cleanup spot, whereas we talked about last night. Bo Porter, the manager, trying to find somebody to back cleanup that can produce some runs with some power. 
And the pitch by Gonzalez is in there, 101. Yeah, real nice breaking ball right there, falling behind, missing with the fastball. A lot of hitters. 1-0 count. They're gearing up for the heat after you just miss it. Good pitch to get back in the count. One ball, one strike delivery on the way. Dominguez will take it outside. For Miguel Gonzalez, his third career start against the Astros. He's got a one and one record of 4-6-6 ERA. He pitched against them last on July 31st here in Baltimore and picked up a win in a six inning performance. 2 1 delivery got him to go after one that was out of the strike zone. 2 2. All right, nice slider. A couple breaking balls. Tried to get him to fish on the one before. This one a tight slider, 85 miles an hour, holding true just till the last few feet in front of the plate. Bites off to get the minute. Dominguez with a swing and miss. Dominguez, two ball, two strike count. And that one he won't go after. About the same place the first one was, but he wouldn't chase. So the count goes full on him. Three balls and two strikes. For the Orioles now, they've improved their record at home to eight and six. And they are 11 and eight on the road this year. 3 2 delivery on the way to him, and that'll be chopped on. And he makes the play. And one away here in the second inning. Celebrate summer at Oriole Park by picking up the new Birdland Summer Six Pack. You get a ticket to six games of your choice throughout the season. Savings up to 20% off the cost of single game tickets. So lock in your seats now for the best games and promotions of the summer and save. Go to Orioles.com slash six pack. Good house on Andy. We're talking about the Orioles win winning record road at home. Only the Orioles, Tigers, and Giants. Uh, the only teams with at least two games over 500 at home and on the road. Tigers, Giants, and O's. And that pitch will be taken down low for a ball. Alex Presley did not start in the ball game last night. Get the left-handed bat in against Gonzalez. Although if you go by the numbers, probably ought to have a right-handed bat in there. <laughs> right. That's really strange. Here's the 1-0 delivery. Off speed delivery and it'll miss the zone to an old. Jerry Kellogg is the home plate umpire for this ball game. If there's a tendency on him over the years of his great umpiring work, probably favors the pitchers a little bit. Gonzalez with a 2 0 delivery. And that'll be on the inside corner for a strike. It's 91 on that one. Yeah, good quality strike from Miguel. Just painted on the inside corner. Yeah, it's a good hitters count 2 and 0. Oh. Still have to execute quality pitches. Take a look at the pitch track working consistently down in the zone. That third pitch caught the corn inside corner on Presley. Here's the 2 1 delivery to him. Presley will get jammed. Second base. Jonathan Scope. And there are two down here in the second inning. Well, certainly Gonzalez will feed off or hopes to what Wei and Chen did last night. The two runs on five hits over seven complete innings. Gonzalez would love to be able to become a little bit more efficient here, work his way through deeper in a ball game. He has pitched uh, as many as uh, six twice this season. Here is George Springer, the young right fielder with power. Puts it in the air to left field. He got a lot of power. Goodbye, home run. Springer cranks one a few rows back into left field, and the Astros get the early lead, one nothing. Home run number two, RBI number eight. Well, Springer, uh, a very dangerous young hitter, big time numbers in the minor leagues, just rocketed through the system. His second home run, big league home run, and this fastball leaks back over that inner third. You see how aggressive he is. Short to it. Look at that hip turn. Long through it there. Solo shot. He was hitting so hard in the minors, they had to bring him up. He forced the effort, and that's why he's here. So they get the lead. Two down, and a swing and a miss by Carter, another home run hitter. Carter, he's had three home runs now in 29 at bats here at Camden Yards. Picking up a home run in the ball game last night, and like Springer, he swings. That one he held back on a little bit and popped it up. Shortstop Hardy will come over and will put it away. So Miguel Gonzalez 
gives up the dinger and the Astros get the one nothing lead. Of the game is James Harris of Springdale. He won 500 for being selected, 500 for every Orioles home run hit tonight. Play the Orioles scratch off from the Maryland Lottery for your chance to be a contestant. Win a trip to see the O's play at Wrigley or to the MLB World Series. Learn more at mdlottery.com slash Orioles. First home run, Gonzalez has surrendered here at home this year. Six hit against him on the season. And a 1 0 lead bottom of the second. Weeders, Hardy, Clevenger due up against Colin McHugh. They delivery to Weeders. And a strike call. Home plate umpire saying he went around Jeff Kellogg. A hard slider inside. See the numbers on Matt Weeders. DH tonight, 323 average, five home runs, 18 RBIs. Matt as a DH has gone three for 13. 1 0 pitch will be inside. John Russell asked uh, when will he catch again. Don't know. Did mention potential for some fluid in the elbow for some of the reason for that discomfort. They're just resting it. There's John. He did the press conference today before uh, Buck returned. And so Matt will just keep DHing until he feels as though he can do it. And when he feels comfortable throwing again, then they'll test it out. And See if he can get back behind the plate. Two ball, one strike count. Reaching for that one. Ground ball into the shift. Ballard will make the play, and Weeders is retired. Our Jeep inside the numbers. Uh, take a look here. All time in Baltimore. This series between the Astros and the O's, and the O's have it. I mean, complete domination. 4.8 runs per game. Suppose the Astros 3.8. Just batting average way up there to 290. Starters ERA down. Bullpen ERA down. I mean, pretty much a complete domination. Runners in scoring position way up to 307. Something the Astros have been struggling with all year. Slider is going to miss outside to J.J. Hardy. Orioles shortstop. One for three in the ball game last night. He's hit had a hit in each of the last three ball games, and the pitch will be taken for a strike. J.J. with that big average against the Houston franchise, 297. Lifetime hitter against Houston with 10 career home runs all those games in the National League games that one off the end of the bat it'll go to short Villar's back and he's got that one two away Masson is giving you the chance to meet and greet 4 2 with Chris Davis just visit facebook.com slash Masson Orioles click on enter sweepstakes for your chance to win to meet and greet him tonight in Bowie we'll keep you updated on that uh, Chris Davis First rehab games playing at Bowie lined out into a shift in his first at bat. He had a seven pitch AB. That'll be a base hit into left field by Clevenger. 
So the Oriole catcher going after the first pitch seen in the ball game picks up the Orioles third hit of the game. That nice piece of hitting right there by Clevenger staying on the two seam fastball away. Shooting it through that five six hole to keep this inning going. Chris Davis now 0 for 2 with a strikeout. He's going to take a number of at bats. I mean, he may hit consecutive innings. He's playing in the field, but uh, he'll come out and they'll put him in one inning and put him in the next and getting as many at bats as possible in that game of Bowie. Here is Steve Pierce. Two down, runner on at first base. Into the shift he looks, and the pitch is taken away for a ball. You see, runs by way of the home run this season. In the month of April, they were scuffling a little bit, only 26.4%, 23rd in the major leagues since May. 16 of 33. That's almost 50%. That's fourth best. The Orioles now are overall a ranked eighth in the American League in homers. They have. Toronto ahead of them in that number one spot. Toronto's hit 50 home runs so far this season. The Orioles have 29. Well, that Toronto offense, they have never gotten cheated. No. Every swing. They get three pitches, they are going to swing as hard as they can. 2 0 delivery. And Pierce will take that, and it misses. Count goes to 3 0. McHugh has had a lot of trouble working out of the stretch in the limited number of at bats is only his third game with runners on base the average against him is 348 when the bases are empty 106 3 0 count two down and he misses really never got one close on that at bat and the Orioles have two on well they're well aware of uh, how hot Steve Pierce is so being very careful there nothing even close so the Orioles trying to mount yet another two out rally as Pierce gets on with a walk. And who other than uh, Jonathan Scope to try and get it done. Jonathan up with two down. Astros lead it by a score of one to nothing. Scope with the one for three in the ball game last night. And he has been the best on the Orioles at picking up the hits. And RBIs with two away overall hitting 333 with two outs and runners on 400. Pretty impressive. Great composure for such a young player. McHugh's delivery to him. Tried to blast that one on the. And there's that again, that 93 mile an hour fastball we talked about that he's throwing this year, which he had not in previous years. 0 1 count. Lead runner Clevenger, Pierce on at first. Jonathan Scope waiting. Put a wrinkle on that one off speed. 0 and 2. Yeah, from 93 to 72. Big breaking ball. That's a pretty good depth with that. Nice tight rotation at the end. You see top of the zone, right to the bottom of the zone on the pitch track. Right hander trying to work his way out of the inning. 0 2. Scope reaching. It'll go to short. Bilar will go to first. And that will end the inning. No runs on one hit, no errors, and two are left on base. Two complete here at Camden Yards. Houston up by one.
Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Gary Thorne, Mike Mordick with you here at Camden Yards. Mother's Day coming up tomorrow. And hope to see a lot of moms here at the ballpark. Well, we uh, take a look at Gonzalez on the mound. Miguel trying to pick up his second win of the season. This is his sixth start. The ball club's the seventh start, rather. The ball club is three and three in his first six starts on the season. Boy, they pile up in a hurry, don't they? I mean, all of a sudden, seventh start. Yeah, it's amazing. So quick, you're right. So Gonzalez uh, waiting for his teammates to get into the shift as Mark Kraus will come to the plate. Kraus came on in the ball game as a pinch hitter, ended up picking up a walk last night. And Kraus will take the pitch and it will miss inside for a ball. Um, Miguel would really love to get that first pitch strike. Uh, very important for him. He hasn't gone to that split finger yet. You know he's going to start busting it out soon. 1 0 delivery to Kraus. Kraus has been a super utility guy for the ball club this season. 21st start. 16 of those have been at first base, one in left field. Three have come as the designated hitter. He's at first base in the ball game tonight. Guzman was there last night. And a breaking ball, and that misses, and the count goes to 3 and 0. Just trying to find it, trying to pick up a strike here. Some way. Number nine hitter Villar, then Altuve at the top. Here's a 3 0 delivery. Kraus is taking all the way. Houston uh, on a road trip, they've won one and lost four on the six game road trip on the year against the East. They are three and four. Bo Porter on the left there. Skipper 3 1 delivery and he got that one on a swinging strike 3 and 2. Yeah beautiful fastball 92 miles an hour just painted on the outside. Take a look at the pitch track. Doesn't get much better than that. Kraus a little tardy on that swing. Orioles 29 year old right hander will step off for a moment. Here at home 21 career starts he's 11 and 5 3 6 6 ERA. There's a rainmaker. See if it'll stay in the yard. And it will. Good play. Clevenger coming over. Track that one down. Let's take a look at our major league notebook on our again page. Yes, it's happened again. Uh, you Darvish, I'm sure many of you see the replays, have seen them. He lost the no hitter, two outs, ninth inning. Second time in his career that has happened. Joey Votto is Cincinnati. Hit a 3 0 pitch for a game winning home run. The last time that happened was Janel Escobar in 2008 on a 3 0 pitch to win a ball game with a homer. And Freddie Freeman's at it. Eight walk off hits since 2011 with Atlanta. That is the most in the major leagues. He had the walk off game winning single last night. By the way, a new Darvish with that second time. He's lost a no hitter with two outs in the ninth. In the last 50 years, only Dave Steed. At the major league level, lost a no hitter with two outs in the ninth more than once. Oh. Oof. The liar up, he'll take it for a strike. Did you see the ball that dropped in in right field, the first one that they called an error earlier in the I game? Didn't, no, I did not. It was interesting. A big hullabaloo about it as far as the official score calling it an error. It was one of those fell between the right field or second baseman, nobody touched it. Uh -huh. But under the rules, you don't have to touch a ball to have an error. Right. But usually, if you don't, it's a base hit. But they called it an error anyway. The next time David Ortiz came, they got the uh, he got the base hit, and so it took right, it took care of the no hitter in the ninth inning. One two delivery. That's going to be in the gap. And Villar will make the turn. Jones up with it. Wow. I'll be darned. Talk about respect for an arm. Villar was going to stay at first base. He was until the ball was bobbled. He was going to go back. Yeah, he took a, big, a very aggressive turn. Villar did smoke that ball into the gap. Adam Jones gets out there and he sees that little hiccup. You see him going hard, sees the hiccup there, and off he goes. And gets into second base. Hmm. Well, it's going to be an error charge. It'll be a base hit and an error on Adam Jones on the bobble. And the reason for that is because Villar was stopping. He was. 
So the Orioles committing their 18th error of the season. Puts a runner at second base and Altuve will get the RBI chance. That's hit number two for the Astros. And the pitch will be outside for a ball. Adam Jones, uh, you know, gold glove center fielder. And that is uh, sometimes the effects of speed. You know, Villar really hustling out of the box. So Adam Jones had to rush out there in center field. To try to cut that ball off. Altuve hitting only 200 with runners in scoring position. Runners going to steal third. Clevenger up, bobbled. Stolen base. He had trouble getting the transfer into the throwing end. So it'll be a stolen base for Villar. It looked like it was going to be a good opportunity there to pick up that out at third base. But show Alders coming out. They think about a challenge on this as he goes to the third base umpire, Dan Bellino. It's going to be a pretty good view right here. Did Manny get his glove there in time? Yeah, it didn't appear so. Pretty good slide by Villar going to that back corner. Trying to get it in there. Manny's foot blocking. And I think that's what Buck was looking at, don't you? He saw where the foot was and wondering. Yeah. I, I wonder if he ever touched the base. How could he get in? So he's looking to Adam, his video replay expert, and uh, Adam says, "Nope, don't challenge." So he doesn't. So Valar is in nine of ten, nine for ten in stolen bases, and the call was right. Yep. So that puts a runner at third now, with one down. The infield is going to be moved in. Altuve with a 2 0 count. So again, small ball being played here in the third inning. Buck Showalter figuring this may not be a high scoring game and not willing to just give this run up. 3 0. Nice block right there by Clevenger. Yeah, as Buck was walking off the field, he turned around. He was directing the infield, telling him to play in, try to cut this run down. Altuve has to stay fairly close to third because Manny Machado is right there with him. 3 0 the count. See if Altuve gets a green light here. Wouldn't think so. He did. Fouled it back. 3 and 1. Take a look at the numbers so far in the instant replay. There have been a total of a 246 calls, 115 overturned. Managers on their challenges, 52. 0.6% overturned. The umpires, when they go themselves to the video replay, 13% overturned. Getting it right. Yeah, that's pretty high. You're around 50%. Calls getting overturned overall. There is ball four, and Altuve's on. So Houston threatening here in the third inning, first and third. And keep in mind, Altuve's got great speed. He is third in the league in stolen bases at first. Well, speed all over the bases right now. I mean, Villar runs really well. Fowler's got good speed from the left side. Going to be a tough guy to double up. Dexter Fowler, one of their better hitters with runners in scoring position at 276. Now the infield at double play depth. For Fowler, grounded out his first time up. Gonzalez, a pronounced fly ball pitcher, as is McHugh. Gonzalez has gotten 63% of his outs on fly balls, and McHugh 68%. So it's a struggle for them to get ground balls sometimes. Would you throw through here? Uh, yeah, I would. Why not? I mean, if he if comes the out. Goes there, well, he faked to go. That's going to be the left field. That'll be a base hit. Well, they don't have to worry about that one. So the base hit for Fowler will score Villar, and it's a 2 nothing lead for the Astros. Altuve goes to second base. Well, Fowler really not trying to do too much. He's picking up the base hit here. They have been struggling with runners in scoring position this season as well. Just 2 oh, 4 Last night they went 0 for 6. So. Yeah. They are dead last in the league in that department. So Fowler comes through for them. That'll be his ninth RBI. And that will bring up Castro, their catcher. Strikeout, swinging. Now four for six with a home run lifetime off Gonzalez. One down, two runs in on three hits in the ballgame for the Astros. 
And the pitch, the big cut, and it will be fouled off. Orioles again trying to find that ground ball. Historically, when you have a fly ball pitcher against a fly ball hitting team, it's to the pitcher's advantage. In both cases, these offenses are fly ball hitting teams against fly ball hitting pitchers. 0 1 count. The look in Castro. Mm. Good location, 0 2. That was a little. Uh... A cutter, a slider, back door, good pitch right on the outside corner. Very well executed. Now you look for him to try to stay down with that split finger. That's when Miguel can get the weak contact ground balls. Castro, the 0 2 delivery to him, and that'll be in the dirt. Clevenger with a nice stop. They will be awake on the base pass. A couple of wild pitches have been thrown by Gonzalez with that pitch Mike was just talking about. So you want to get as big a secondary lead if you can. If you're on base, Altuve in this case it's second, the lead runner. One ball, two strike count. Castro hitting a buck 61 with runners in scoring position. Hardy holding the runner close at second base. Here's the one two. Reach Stan got him. Oh there it was the nasty split finger bounced the prior one. But when it is right this is the type of action he gets. Take a look at the pitch track it just takes off down and away. Castro no chance looks like it's going to be a hanger and just disappears down and away beautiful pitch big second out for Gonzalez and there Mike's what we were talking about earlier is a primary reason why left handers struggle against yeah, him. it just moves away he has super action and doesn't have that pitch for the right handers right. so two down here's Matt Dominguez Dominguez grounded out his first time up runners off first and second base. Altuve not very far off the bag. Jonathan Scope there with him. Altuve will take off for third if he thinks he can get a jump. Oh yeah, he will. And Fowler back there as well. Try to get both runners in the scoring position with two outs. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to take off. Gonzalez will step off this time. Houston can hit home runs and they can steal some bases. They've struggled in about every other category, but they can do that. There he goes. Double steal. Clevenger's throw, no chance. So two steals on that one. El Tuve will get one and Fowler will get the other. Well, it's hard. You don't want to give up ground defensively. You see Scope looking at him, not really making any kind of commitment in El Tuve. He is just looking to run every time he gets on base. You see him slide in there safely. Throw kind of pulling Machado into foul territory. 12 stolen bases ties him for first in the American League in steals. Now a base hit could score two. Dominguez 1 0 count. And Matt Dominguez will pop it up. Second base. Scope. He's got it. Big out recorded right there. But a run will score in this inning. It's been all about the stolen base in the air. Two nothing Astros.
nicknames, John. You can sing that to the uh, Kingston Trio, where have all the flowers gone? Luke Appling, the great Hall of Famer. His nickname was Old Aches and Pain. Sabre, the Research Society for Baseball. I looked at this morning, they said he may have been the greatest hypochondriac to ever play the game. Back aches, headaches, knee problems every game, and then went out and got three hits. Luke Appling. Juan Berenguer, the pitcher. Senor Smoke or El Gasolino. I like that one. And of course, Brooksy, the human vacuum cleaner. Great nicknames that somehow kind of disappeared from our lexicon in baseball. Yeah, there there are a few around there. Of course, Crush Davis. Yep. Uh, the Orioles kind of adopted that. They love that. And uh, Kung Fu Panda in San Francisco. Good one. Yeah, real good. That's a good one. Kung Fu Panda. Panda Bear, however, lost a lot of the Panda Bear weight. And along with it went the hits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe we want to rethink that Panda's a good thing. Here is Nick Marquez. Nick continued his hit streak base hit first inning 17 game hit streak. Our great staff took a look here. Marquez during this hit streak has now singled in his first at bat seven times in the 17 game streak and in five of the last six games singling or getting a hit in his first time to the plate in the ball game. So he really takes the heat off. I mean not that he worries about the hit streak because he doesn't but. Any thought of it just kind of disappears right. after that first at bat. Yeah, last night he picked up that leadoff single and then uh, proceeded to get a couple more hits. Three hits in last night's ball game. We're going to try to do the same here. Bottom of the third, two nothing lead for the Astros. McHugh's delivery. Right-hander will miss outside. Two ball, two strike count. Colin McHugh, 26 years old. Opponent sitting just 186 against him through his first three starts. Orioles have three singles in the ball game. Here's the 2 2. Tried to wait on that, drives it in the air, center field. Fowler has it. One away. Tomorrow, celebrate Mother's Day here at Oriole Park. The first 20,000 women, 18 and over, at the 135 game, will get the special Mother's Day cap. So gather up the family, create some Birdland memories. The 60th anniversary season of the O's. For tickets, visit Orioles.com. 888 848 Bird the phone. And your Mother's Day cap tomorrow. And, uh, <laughs> I took Mike's advice. Here's Manny Machado. To convince your wife that a baseball cap is an extremely fine gift and a rare collectible item. It sure is. It is. Well, is you a told me that. Hat. It is. So if you get that, who needs anything else? <laughs> Apparently, unfortunately, there was an answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to hear that. One ball, one strike down. Manny Machado grounded out his first time up. Nasty pitch away. It really was uh, getting the right handers to reach likes to stay on that outer third. And that slider is a big pitch for him. And you see <laughs> look at the pitch track right there all three pitches down and away to Manny Machado. Well aware of what he did with that inside fastball in last night's game. One two delivery on the way a little off speed pitch. Altuve. And there are. Two down. Well, it's early to see what McHugh is really going to be in the duration of a season. He's never had that chance before at the major league level, but he's pretty good in this game, and his numbers haven't looked bad overall for three games, although the last outing wasn't good. Yeah, um, actually throwing the ball really well here, but something to look out for now when he was making his starts in the minor leagues, most pitches he threw was 73. So he would make a start. Throw 73 pitches, and then his next start would come in in relief. Hmm. And then he would make a start again on his throw day, and then he threw uh, 50 pitches. And then he came back in in relief the next time. And that's something that the Astros have kind of adopted that type of theory to starting pitchers. Well, when he came to the big leagues, hmm. his first start he threw 89. His second start, he was dealing, so they kept him in there. He threw 114 pitches, almost threw a complete game. Following start is when he got roughed up a little bit. So how to manage that pitch count for him mm -hmm. is going to be interesting to follow. 
Cruz takes it outside. We shouldn't start this discussion with two down, but we were talking about this yesterday. Houston's actually doing something we talked about about a week ago, going to naming two starters for a game. Yeah. Instead of one. One's going to go five, one's going to go four, in the belief it'll save your pitchers and actually result in less injuries to your pitchers than going with a regular rotation. Now, yeah. They haven't adopted that completely but they're talking about it. Sure. Well they've used it in their lower levels and even the triple A to some extent now with injuries and you know some guys just showing that they couldn't handle it. They've had to change. We'll talk about that a little more as we roll along but a breaking ball by McHugh the strikeout that'll be his second of one two three inning three complete at Camden Yards with the Astros leading. Clinics today. This one for over 400 Fort Meade Little Leaguers. There in a day, Chris Tillman, Orioles third base coach Bobby Dickerson, and former Oriole L. Bumbry. They helped in the running stations, the uh, highlighting pitching, fielding, base running, and hitting. And the club gave each participant a nose hat, t shirt, and tickets to a future Orioles game at the Fort Meade Little League program. And of course, the bird. And a very nice tweet from one of the mums of the youngster who was out there. Great time today for our Fort Meade T ball. Such an awesome experience for the kids. Good luck tonight. Yeah, great stuff out there. Uh, Orioles giving back to the community, but that's an easy one there. Yep. They enjoy that stuff. They love spending time with the kids. And the kids will never forget it. First ball hitting, that'll go to center. Not deep. Hardy back, and he's got it. So Presley retired. He's 0 for 2. He has popped out twice in the ball game. Fourth inning, the Astros two runs, three hits, no errors. They've left two. The Orioles 0 3 and 1. They have left three on base. RBI Springer, the home run in the second inning, and Fowler with an RBI base hit in the third. Key play for the Orioles may have been in that first inning. Arcagas reached on a single, and with Manny Machado up, Orioles tried to hit and run. Manny swung and missed. Arcagas got caught in a rundown and was retired. And that pretty much took care of the first inning and the Orioles haven't gotten to McHugh since. Here is Springer with a long ball and an 0 for 4 in last night's game. Is there ever a swing where he's not going for the long ball? Now he is a dangerous hitter. Now he signed back in 2011, but 2012 split time single A, double A, hit 24 home runs. Moved him up in 2013 split time double A, triple A, hit 37 home runs. So this guy has power. Mm. That one will be fouled off with a club like Houston, where the talent level is not where they'd like it to be. Their players for the future really are going to have to learn a little bit here at the major league level rather than below. And Springer's one of those. And you just can't keep somebody with those kind of numbers down on the farm. You sure can. One ball, two strike count. Gonzalez's delivery to him and a nice pitch fading away. Well, he's really throwing this pitch well. Nice cutter, slider, kind of hybrid pitch. Great on the outside corner. Perfect location. Springer pulls him deep to left field early. You see the hips fly off. Excellent location there from Miguel. 
Uh, Gonzalez, uh, Gonzalez rather with three strikeouts and one walk. And two down here in the fourth inning. Here is Carter. Carter popped out his first time up. The Orioles shift the infield. He rips it down the line, and that'll be a foul ball. He has a rather an unorthodox swing. It's it's just kind of a free flow, put the barrel on the ball thing. That's tries to put the barrel on. Tries the ball, to be. Yeah, he <laughs> strikes out a lot because it is free flowing. He's not just trying to make contact. He's trying to nail every pitch for a home run. And it almost appears like he uh, just kind of guesses where the ball is going to be. He sees it out of the pitcher's hand, thinks, okay, that's the spot it's going to be, and swings in that yep. zone. Make a mistake, and you're in trouble. Pitch will be taken down low for Carter. Long ball is what it's all about. He's one for six, lifetime off Gonzalez. Outfield, deep, pretty much straight away. The infield swung around. Two down, here's the one two. Puts that one up in the air. Jones coming in. Plenty of time, and he'll put it away. So a one, two, three inning, five in a row, retired by Miguel Gonzalez. The Astros are up game two of this three game set. Fans to tweet their photo using hashtag Masson Fan Photos for a chance to have it shown in a future broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Astros have a two nothing lead. We'll be back with you for the Mother's Day game tomorrow and a wrap up of this series. Chris Tillman, Jared Cosart, the scheduled starters. One o'clock for O's extra, one thirty for the ball game. Then the Tigers will be in for two night games Monday, Tuesday, and a twelve thirty game. On Wednesday, it'll be Bud Norris, Rick Porcello, Game One, Ubaldo Jimenez and Drew Smiley, Game Two, Wei and Chen and Justin Verlander in Game Three. Here's Adam Jones and the breaking ball tied him up again. That first off-speed pitch in there. McHugh has thrown 10 out of 13 first pitches for strikes. He has walked one and struck out two. Jones, Weeters, and Hardy coming up for the O's. No, oh, missed his spot there, but got away with it. Pretty good velocity on the fastball. Ended up down and away. Castro wanted it down and in. See the pitch track. Right in the heart of the plate. That's a big breaking ball. And then he dotted that fastball down and away to get the second strike. Here's the 0-2 delivery. We were talking about going back to using two starters in a game. John McGraw, we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. John McGraw in 1903 did that. He would name one starter for five innings and one starter for four. Now he only did that for a couple of years and then went back to what we know as a rotation, a four-man rotation then that moved on to a five. Adam puts it up in the air to right field. Springer. He'll put it away. 
And then uh, starting in the 1910s, the concept of relief pitching started to come into the fore, according to John Thorne, who is the official historian of Major League Baseball. They had a number one starter and a number one reliever, but what you were talking about, the starters would be the relievers. Yeah, they would announce. Just, yeah. They would have four groups of two starters. Yeah. And a guy would start, and then a guy would come in and throw four innings. They'd have a pitch count. The first starter would throw 70 pitches, and the next guy would throw 40 or 50, and then they'd flip flop in the next rotation. Yeah. And uh, general manager Jeff Lanau really kind of incorporated of Houston. that. Yeah, of, of Houston Astros incorporated that into their minor league system and has really tried to implement it strongly. And, and he knows that. You know, through the course of injuries and, and uh, call ups, this and that, that it will weed it, itself out. And at the end of the year, probably they will have starters, but they need to find out about their younger pitchers. Can they handle it? You know, a lot of young arms, they don't know if they're going to get strong enough. And it's really helped uh, the injury problems with a lot of young pitchers. Yep. And uh, it's good in development to some sense. And he actually learned that when he was over in the St. Louis organization. They had adopted it in the lower level. So he brought that over to Houston. It's interesting. I mean, it's a concept that's out there and being talked about. At first blush, it would seem, well, you can't do that. And one of the problems is the money at the big league level being paid to starters. But the trouble is, for a lot of people starting to say, look, starters are being overpaid. We're only getting five, six innings out of them. I mean, why are they any more valuable now than a reliever <laughs> who comes in? Matt Wieters will foul that one off and a two ball two strike count. So we'll see but it's interesting that the Houston GM has actually done that in the farm system employing that kind of a look at pitchers and the idea that pitch counts are something new. No, no. all the way back to the 1903 through 1910 period and that's what McGraw one of the great innovators of the game is doing. Here's the 2 2 delivery to Wieters and the off speed pitch got him. Oh, he has been good with the curveball tonight. He's throwing it for first pitch strikes and then he's finished off some hitters. Take a look, pitch track here, right at the bottom of the zone, 74 miles an hour after rushing some pitches in on the hands of Wieters. And there is some late tight bite on that breaking ball. That'll bring up J.J. Hardy. Popped out first time up one for four in the two games. And the pitch is there for a strike. Chris Davis playing at Bowie is playing at first base tonight. He's had uh, an 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts in the ball game, but getting in the game. The intention is that he would play there again tomorrow and then probably would come back to the Orioles on Monday. Nothing set in granite, but that's the plan. Here's the 0-2 delivery. I know Davis will come back tonight and be calling Buck and saying, I'm ready for oh, yeah. Sunday. Oh, you know that. One of the problems that we talked about it last night, you the fans be the GM. Take a look at the Orioles roster. What do you make for a move to get him back on the roster? Who goes? That is tough. Tough decision. 0-2 delivery, breaking ball. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. Two down, nobody on, fourth inning. A couple of singles in the first, a two out single by Clevenger in the second. That was the last hit the Orioles have had off Colin McHugh. One two delivery. That one will be outside. Hard slider, two balls, two strikes. Well, McHugh hasn't doubled up with a pitch to J.J. Hardy. Take a look at the pitch track. There's been a fastball, breaking ball, cutter, breaking ball, cutter. Just constantly mixing it up. No true rhythm. Got him on the fist to right field. Springer is there, and he's got it in another 1-2-3 inning, and that will be seven in a row retired by McHugh. Astros two, and the Orioles nothing.
nothing lead here in the middle game of this three game set. Monica is her name. She is the wonderful wife of Mr. Bordick. Monica, I wanted you to see the gift that hubby will be bringing home. This is that fantastic Mother's Day cap, which the uh, women will be receiving tomorrow. But Mike got yours tonight. I did. You're at it. Yeah. You're early. You're hey, on it. Take care of business. You're a good man. Thank you. I don't very care much. what she says. <laughs> All right. Uh, how are the Orioles going to get to the starter? Well, they will. I mean, I, you know, I think you follow his track record. He got roughed up in that last start, and, and they're going to wait him out and make for wait for mistakes. That's what's going to have to happen. Right now, he's in pretty good command of all of his pitches. The Orioles have been hitting some home runs lately. Get a guy on. Might be old school Orioles baseball, you know, play for that three run homer. Or Nero Weaver Saturday night yeah. here at the ballpark. All right, let's see what happens with it. Each team with three hits in the ball game, and that one will be taken for a strike. Miguel Gonzalez going back to work. Against eight, nine, and one. Kraus popped out his first time up, playing at first base tonight. Villar and then Altuve. Three stolen bases in the ball game for the Astros tonight. One of them the double steal. One ball, one strike count. For Gonzalez, a walk and three strikeouts. McHugh the same. The facade down the first baseline. One and two. Now Miguel actually pitching a pretty good ball game himself. Utilizing all of his pitches, really mixing them up well. Springer with that solo home run. That's some aggressive baseball. Actually, a, a clutch hit, a rare clutch hit with runners in scoring position mm. for the Astros you know, to get the second run. Didn't get many of those. It was Fowler who looped one for that second RBI. Gonzalez with a two ball, two strike count. And a floater that kind of got away from him there and misses up high. And the count will go to three and two on Kraus. Kraus popped up to Clevenger, the catcher, first time up. Here's the 3 2 delivery. There's another off speed pitch and got him. Krause was headed to first base instead of go to the pine as the fourth strikeout victim. There you go, a 3 2 breaking ball pitch track showing it's in the box right at the top of the strike zone. Away, consistently working him away. Just kind of locks Kraus up, not expecting the curve there on the end. That'll bring Villar up with one down. Jonathan Villar, the young. He's looking at now 23 years old. He just celebrated his 23rd birthday. Pushing one. Gonzalez. Nice play by Pierce again at first. Great speed. Not a particularly good bunt, but made close by his speed. Hey, you wonder where he was trying to push that ball. Center field? Yeah, I mean, he went after it aggressively. And hit the top part. Miguel, nice job bouncing off. Then fires one down in the dirt. And Pierce once again coming up with the big pick. You see that big push right there on the end. And lost it off the barrel. Good defense by the Orioles. And look at Steve Pierce reaching out, making the play. That'll bring up Altuve, the leadoff batter. He has walked. Stolen a base. Flied out. Rips it to third underneath the glove of Machado, who is playing in. And there again, the effect of speed. Machado's not there if Altuve's not a speedster. But he is, he was, and he couldn't get it. Take a look at our PNC Minor League report brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever in you. Yeah, take a look here. Matt Taylor off to a fabulous start. Last couple seasons working on his delivery in Delmarva, promoted to Frederick High A, and he has been on fire last night. Seven and a third strong innings, no runs, one base on ball, three strikeouts. This season, 4 1 record with a 109 earned run average, holding opponents to a 247 batting average and a very low batting average with runners on base, just 176. Now Will Altuve trying to take off again with two down here in the fifth inning and Fowler up. Fowler the RBI base hit in the third. One for two in the ball game. Altuve 12 stolen bases and 14 chances. Two down. And Gonzalez will play the game with him. With Gonzalez on the mound, base stealers have gone three for three. 
Clevenger behind the plate including the three stolen bases tonight has thrown out two of twelve. And the cat and mouse game here. Altuve leaning not going it is a pitch out. Yeah you got to mix it up take a chance there Altuve every time he's got on base he's looks like he's going to steal or try to steal and actually has. Made several attempts already in the first two games of this series. I saw John Russell giving the signs to Clevenger. He's got to mix it up a little bit. Keep him guessing so he doesn't get comfortable. Down to first. That's a fair ball. No. Ooh. Well, he was right on the line. Al Gibson, the first base umpire, that looked like it might have gone over the bag. He said no. Yeah, there's the attempt by Steve Pierce. And he was right. Good call there. Uh, tougher plays by a first baseman. He's got to bounce off to try to fill up that hole. Pierce trying to fight to get back. And make a play. Just foul. Amazing how many of those they get right. He had everybody in front of him a runner, a first baseman, <laughs> a coach hollering at him, <laughs> and still got the call right. Bo Porter, he thought it was a fair ball, but. He's got his video replay guy in the clubhouse back there. One ball, one strike. Fowler. Altuve has extended the lead by half step. Ball hits him. That might slow him down a little bit. Hopefully he's all right. Might have caught him in the back of the helmet. No Porter whip whistling out the signs over there. One ball, one strike, two away. Gonzalez will hold it this time to try and freeze the runner. But also, he was going. Uh, he, time out, though. Fowler got it. Yeah, he's mixing it up. I mean, Miguel hasn't shown any consistency at all as far as his time to the plate. Long hold right there. A couple pickoff attempts, a quick delivery. And that one, the long hold, a pitch out on one. Anything he can try to do to disrupt the timing out of Altuve, but even after that long hole, he hold he got a great jump at first base. Fowler coming from the Colorado organization, playing in his first year in Houston, and the off-speed delivery is going to be in there for a strike. So the count goes to one and to two on Dexter Fowler. Gonzalez trying to get out of the inning at a couple of quick outs. And now Altuve with that base hit, causing some concern over there at first. Really got nothing to lose sending him here, do you? Nothing. Nothing at all. I mean, he's got the green light, I'm sure. Not going, and the pitch will miss. And the count goes to two and two. And you think a lot of times at the beginning of the bat, at bat, you know, give Fowler a chance to utilize that hole over there with Altuve on. And now with two strikes and two outs. Get him in motion. Maybe Fowler puts it in play with the defense moving a little bit. Hitting only 226 left handed, 290 right handed. Fowler, the switch hitter. Runner goes inside, no chance. So it'll be the second stolen base of the ball game for Altuve and the fourth of the game for Houston. And puts a runner in scoring position with a 3 2 count and two down on Fowler. There's the pitch track. I'm trying to work down and away. And get that second strike over the heart of the plate. And the 3 2 delivery on the way. Fowler takes it and he's on with a walk. So that's the second walk surrendered. All this coming after there were two down. And now the middle of the order, Castro, the number three hitter, will be coming up with two on. And that ratcheted the pitch count up suddenly. It's uh, 67. And Castro, one of those dangerous hitters in this lineup as well. Four home runs on the season. Really not much of a batting average, but that ability to hit the long ball. And that's why they can be so dangerous with runners on base. So here is Jason Castro.
Not many opportunities for both teams. Runners in scoring position. Astros uh, one for three, now one for nine here in the series. The Orioles only 0 for one. And the Q pitching a really solid game. The shift is on with Hardy having to stay close to second. Jonathan Scope way out in right field. And a big swing and a miss by Castro. Castro came in, as we said, with the hot numbers against Gonzalez. Now is four for seven. And uh, one home run. Castro, he's had good luck against the uh, Orioles in his career. 286 hitter with a couple of home runs against the O's. One of those home runs here at Camden Yards, where he is four for 13. 0 1 count. Runners off first and second base. That ball's going to go into the shift. Jonathan Scope will play it on the big hop, waits for Pierce to get there, and they record the out. No runs, one hit, no errors. A couple are left on base. It remains a 2 0 Houston lead. Baseball in Masson is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by Luna for beautiful new carpet, hardwood, and laminate. Call 877 241 Luna. And Mike Mordecai, Gary Thorne here in a uh, early summer type evening. Lots of youngsters on hand for the ball game. The Orioles have the 2 0 lead. Uh, Houston has the 2 0 lead, rather. Orioles winning last night. Another one run ball game. 4 to 3. The Orioles now. Third in the league in win percentage in one run games. They've won eight and lost three. On the other side, the reverse record for Houston, they are three and eight in one run ball games. Well, they're close. We talked about this in yesterday's game. You know, the Orioles bullpen has come up so big in these close ball games to keep them there. Well, the Astros, their bullpen hasn't been as consistent this season. Well, they've got some pretty good uh, starting pitching. Scott Feldman's off to a good start. Spent some time on the disabled list, but in his you know, four starts has pitched well. The cue here having a strong outing. Looking to maybe bunt for a base hit. Steve Clevenger. Clevenger a single his first time up. Cruz, Clevenger, Marquecas have the singles. Seven in a row have been retired by Colin McHugh. Clevenger, big cut, foul back, 101. Now Orioles had to find a way to put some pressure on McHugh. Get him out of this rhythm he's in right now. Pretty efficient with his pitch count, 63 to this point. You see that consistent use of the off speed pitches, the cutter and the curve, 56% of the time. That'll go to second on the short hop, Altuve. Over to Krause at first base, one away here in the fifth inning. On Tuesday, celebrate Birdland's newest slugger as the O's fans are going to get at the Tigers game the Nelson Cruz Orioles t shirt. The Cruz Cheers become one of the most popular here at the ballpark this year. And don't forget that every Tuesday is Ollie's Bargain Night presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. Upper reserve seats are just $9 in advance. You get your tickets 888 848 Bird or Orioles.com. Boy, that shirt would look good in the hat, wouldn't it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> 
Why don't you wait till uh, Christmas? You can get the shirt, <laughs> but wait till Christmas. You don't want to give all the goodies away at once. I didn't see any rain, did you? No. No. And the pitch is swung on and missed. Pierce drew a walk his first time up. 0 oh, 2 the count. Thunderstorms have been in the area all day. More were expected tonight. McHugh with the 0 2 pitch and will bounce that one inside. We'll take a look at Steve Pierce last night. He has been red hot. He jumped on this mistake. One of the few mistakes Feldman made. 102 miles per hour off the bat of Steve Pierce. And he has been on fire. Three home runs in his last four ball games. Five for 13 over that stretch. One ball, two strike count with the infield shift on against him. Waited on it and will foul it off outside of third. Another off speed pitch right there. You've seen the great variation that McHugh has on these pitches as far as velocity is concerned. 93, 94, all the way down to 72. Yeah, really mixing it up well. See the pitch track. Trying to keep it down in the zone. That pitch in yesterday's ball game elevated a little bit. So McHugh trying to keep it off that bat head. One, two delivery on the way. Leaned and took it. And the count goes to two balls and two strikes. Orioles have had the leadoff man only one out of five innings. And that's McHugh's number. 80% of leadoff batters retired. That's a great number. 2 2 delivery, and that will miss. The good eye by Pierce, and he works the count to three balls and two strikes. Steve Pierce with the great numbers against the American League West. 372 average, those three home runs. 3 2 delivery, and he's on. So the Orioles will get their second walk off McHugh. This one coming with one away here in the fifth inning. ATT, as promised, brings you our ATT fan photo. On hand at the ballpark, submitted, used. Love those. <laughs> those are good pictures. Yeah. I like the kids. Yeah. I like the little little guys and girls. Here's Jonathan Scope. Scope grounded out his first time up. Pretty good lead over there at first base. Pierce draws the attention of McHugh. Castro's thrown out 27% behind the plate, and with McHugh on the mound. One out of two caught stealing. One down. Orioles trying to get something going here against him in the fifth. That'll be down to third. Tough play. Dominguez up with it. Mercy. He's made plays at third base. Mike was talking last night like there's nothing to it. Yeah. <laughs> Very relaxed over there. That was a tough ball. I mean, he charged it the right way, but it ended up taking a bigger hop than he expected. He gathered it pretty nicely in the midsection up on that high thigh. Quick transfer, easy throw to get Jonathan Scope. So the Orioles are going to get just their second chance with a runner in scoring position in the ball game. And it'll be Nick Marcakis. Pierce down at second, two down. Marcakis a one for two. The base hit that he picked up in the first inning. Orioles last night had a two for nine in these situations. They're back on top in the American League, hitting 284 with runners in scoring position and a strike taken. Oh, really commanding that pitch well. The number of times he started hitters off with that slow breaking ball. Get me over strike, and then he has the ability to throw it in the dirt for a strikeout type pitch. Oh, one count with two down. Arcagas waiting on it, and that's at the knees, and that's in there for a strike. That one at 85, and the count goes to 0 2. A rare changeup right there. Worked its way off the plate. Pitch track showing it tailed down and away. Didn't catch the box. Quite a pretty quality pitch though. Where he'd like to keep it. The lead at second for Pierce. The 0-2. Arcagas down to first foul. <laughs> and a magnificent dance down there by Mr. Kirby. 
<laughs> Wayne may uh, receive a call. <laughs> Adam Young's loving that. They're always ratting each other. <laughs> Apparently that gumbo is not holding him to the ground. <laughs> Still with a quick feet. <laughs> oh two count two away. Okay, is trying to get that run in. They'll move the shift a little further over now. Villar goes to shallow center behind second. O2 oh, pitch on the way. Almost got him. McHugh coming inside a couple of times in the game. One and two. Yeah, running that hard slider in on Marcakis. Actually just forcing fastball up there to get him off the plate. Possibly open up that outside corner. Major League mark of two and nine for McHugh. One two delivery off speed. Altuve has it. Nice pickup. And records the out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and a base runner left on. So another great pitching duel underway here in this Saturday night. On Mother's Day for the finale to this series, Chris Tillman will be going against Jared Cosart. Our coverage on Masson at 1 with those extra presented by Geico, followed by game coverage at 1.30 on Masson and WJC. All the access you need right here on Masson. We'll take a look at the starters tomorrow. Uh, Jared Cosart, boy, he is a good young pitcher, just 23 years old, and he's got a power fastball off to a pretty good start. Look at 28 strikeouts in 38 innings. Chris Tillman, the Orioles ace, 3.80 earned run average, three wins on the season. Fans enjoying the ball game Saturday night. <laughs> Turned around at just the right time. <laughs> we go to the sixth inning. Gonzalez working against Dominguez, Presley, and Springer. Matt Dominguez, 0 for 2 tonight, 2 for 5 in the two games. And Dominguez taps that one down the line. It will be foul, and Manny Machado makes sure it stays there. Dominguez has really put up some numbers in his young career against the Orioles. He's hitting coming into the game 385 overall against the Orioles with two home runs. And he's done well here at Camden Yards with the seven hits in 18 at bats and one home run. Pretty good young player. Now you had mentioned in yesterday's ball game, the youngest team in baseball here, the Houston Astros. So. A lot of young talent. It's a matter of learning how to win. I think when the time is right, get some of their young prospects up here, and they'll probably invest in some veterans. And they've got some pitchers over here brought in, really kind of building into their philosophy. They like the ground ballers. That's why they brought Feldman over, signed him to a three-year deal. Those aren't get some ground balls as well. 
The two ball one strike pitch on the way up the middle base hit. So Dominguez is on with a single to lead off the sixth inning. Let's turn to our Major League Notebook for a moment and take a look at this day in baseball. 1909, Fred Tony set a mark that still holds the longest no hitter in organized baseball history. It was the Lexington Colts of the Bluegrass League that he was pitching for. A 17 inning, one run ball game decided on a squeeze play in the bottom of the 17th. He pitched a Complete game no hitter and in 72 Dave McNally threw his fourth shot out of the season for the Orioles shutting out the Rangers one nothing Pete Broberg the opposing pitcher just two hits took the loss in that ball game. Dave McNally getting the win McNally three time all star wins uh, six times 15 wins in a season four times a 20 game winner two World Series wins with the Orioles in 66 and 1970 Dave McNally. Pretty good resume. <laughs> Pretty good resume right there. Part of the celebration of the 60th anniversary of the Orioles here in Baltimore. 0 1 delivery on the way, and that'll be foul back Alex Presley. Presley has popped out twice, hitting just 216 on the year. This is the first inning in which the Astros have been able to get the leadoff man on against Gonzalez. Let's see if Miguel can hold that door shut. O2 the count. Short lead at first by Dominguez and a chop foul. Good breaking ball right there from Miguel. Felt off some tough pitches here in this at bat. A couple weak fly balls in his prior two at bats. Getting some good swings on some tough pitches. Miguel trying to finish him off. Take a look at the pitch track. A breaking ball, split finger, fastball, mixing it up. Gonzalez is the opposite of McHugh. He is much tougher with runners on than when the bases are empty. 0 2 delivery on the way, and he got him. Perfectly located pitch for his fifth strikeout. Well, it really was a great pitch. Take a look at the pitch track here. A breaking ball in the outside corner. That one went the Astros way. This one goes the Orioles way. In the back door slider. Clevenger pulling it back up into the zone. And that's the first out in the sixth inning. It'll bring up Springer, his second home run of the year. Came in the second inning, solo shot with two down. Fowler, the other run, RBI single down to third, fair ball. That'll roll into the corner. Start by Dominguez coming to third. He's not particularly fast. They're going to hold him up. It'll be a double. Pat Listash, third base coach, saw him chug in there and didn't like what he saw. So he put the stop sign up and held him at third base. Well, no need in taking a chance there. Take a look at Springer just ambushing this pitch right down the third base line. Manny Machado trying to get to it. You see, he's got a great pre pitch. Feet are active. And pretty good jump, but Springer hit it hard. Manny Machado, a couple steps. You see the long reach just getting by him down the third base line. So Springer picks up the two bagger, fourth double, and another threat here for Houston. Only one away, second and third. Six hits in the ballgame. Houston one for four with runners in scoring position and another big chance for a big difference in this game. Carter has popped out and flied out. Infield in. Gonzalez with that long hold. And fouled off. A good pitch there. Infield in, but they're back a little bit. And I know Dominguez doesn't run quite as well. So they're trying to give themselves enough room, a little extra range out there to cut this run down. Left hander Troy Patton. First bullpen action of the night. And that ball is going to miss. Only 80 pitches thrown, so it's not a high pitch count. No, it really isn't. He has been very efficient in this ball game. Dominguez on at third, Springer on at second with a double. He is a double and a home run now. That's his first game in which he's had multiple extra base hits this year for Springer. 
Gonzalez one and one. We are in the sixth inning and two big potential runs. Carter will put it up in the air. Jonathan Scope. He's got it and a big out. Yeah, it sure was. Miguel Gonzalez has got him with the breaking ball in all three of his bats. Some soft pop ups. Take a look at Miguel though. Breakdown by innings. In his career, innings one through four, very good. 307 earned run average. Opponent sitting 224. In innings five or more, that's when that ERA jumps up. Opponent's hitting much better. Strikeout to walk ratio decreases. He's given up a few more home runs in the nine innings pitch. And a lot of that has to do with, okay, third time through the order. Fatigue might be setting in a little bit here this season. Miguel's pitch count has been escalated in a hurry right around the fifth inning. That's when it starts hitting a wall if his pitch count gets up around 90, close to 100 pitches. So now another big at bat with two down here in the sixth inning. Kraus up, he has struck out and popped out. This is where Houston uh, on the year has really had a problem trying to find these RBI hits. And the pitch will be inside for a ball. Mark Kraus. Getting the start at first base and facing Gonzalez for the first time in his career in this ball game. You think you're seeing rain coming down, but you're really not. It's an illusion. Here's the 1 0. Off speed, tapper down to first base. Pierce will take it to the bag, and another good job by Gonzalez to get out of it. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left in scoring position. Our Honda do ups. Manny Machado will kick it off, and Nelson Cruz and Adam Jones when we come back. In a day game, beat the Blue Jays five to three. Skaggs got the win, fine outing. A couple of earned runs, four Ks. Aren't Canacion a double and an RBI in that ball game? Sean Kelly, the closer for the Yankees, could not pitch last night. He's day to day, stiff lower back, did an MRI, no damage discovered, but right now a question whether he can be used. And for David Ortiz, as the weather heats up, so does his bat. You see his career. Numbers OPS wise as the weather gets hotter and the games get tougher he gets hotter and better and it's happening again here this month. Yeah, we'll go down in history as one of the greatest clutch DHs of all time. I mean, just incredible numbers. And the delivery is put up in the air but not very deep second base Altuve goes back. Manny Machado is retired one pitch and one out in the sixth inning. Time is running out for Maryland residents with a valid driver's license to go to Orioles.com slash plates and bid on license plate numbers 1955 and 1959 marking the team's first decade in Baltimore bidding closes 10 p.m. tomorrow night proceeds benefit the Orioles charitable foundation. So place your bids now at Orioles.com slash plates. Here is Cruz a single and is struck out. And a swing and a miss. 
McHugh has dominated this game. Only three hits by the Orioles, all singles, all coming in the first two innings. The Astros, a couple of runs on six hits. And Cruz over the top of that one, 0 and 2. Throwing strikes. I mean, that's what he's all about aggressive in the strike zone. That is his game. And he hasn't made a lot of mistakes in the zone. He retired eight in a row before walking Pierce in the fifth inning. And has a one ball, two strike count. Efficient at 81 pitches. Shift on against Nelson. He'll take the pitch outside. Started the day tied for third in home runs and fourth in RBIs in the American League. As Nelson Cruz looking to get on here and get the potential tying run to the plate for the Orioles. 2 2 delivery to him. Not this time. Well, just challenging Nelson Cruz there. First pitch slider than a couple fastballs. This one actually a dangerous pitch. A good velocity, 93 miles an hour. Also might have been thinking about something off speed, and that fastball got on him. So that's four strikeouts picked up by McHugh. Two down, nobody on, and here is Adam Jones. Adam 0 for two with the strikeout and a fly ball out. One for six. First two games of this series. Rain picks up a little bit now. And a strike in this at bat. Cleveland announcing today that uh, John Axford's not the closer anymore. Terry Francona has pulled him out of the role, said we'll go committee closing for the time being. Axford had given up uh, five runs in the last four games. He was nine out of 11 in saves. Two days ago, he led the American League in yeah. saves. <laughs> that happened quick, huh? Now he's lost the job. That one deep to center field. It is way back in the seats. Hey, goodbye, home run. Adam Jones delivers the long ball and gets the Orioles on the board. His fourth of the year in his 18th RBI. Well, McHugh, he's kind of established his off speed pitches. He's trying to sneak some fastballs by the heart of this order. And Adam Jones, he catches him, he catches him out front. So the Orioles use of the homer continues here this month as they pick it up. First home run given up by McHugh this season. And Adam Jones makes it a two to one ball game. Leaders 0 for two in the game two down. And our Lexus the Towson drive of the game. And it's Adam Jones right here. Fastball down in the zone. But the middle of the plate. And he destroys this pitch. His last three home runs been the straightaway center. And they've all looked very similar. Drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson. The area's number one Lexus dealer. Come see why at LexusofTowson.com. So that ignites the park here. At one ball, one strike count on Weeders. Not looking for his first hit of the series. And a little ground ball off the fist played in the shift by Villar, and that will do it. But the Orioles do get on the board. A run and a hit, no errors, nobody left on. Six complete. It's the swing of the bat by Adam Jones that makes it a 2 1 game.
Michael Jackson interlude there. Now back to baseball. Gonzalez on the mound. He gets an out here. He'll have his longest outing of the season. Jonathan Villar. Villar has scored one of the runs, third inning. And then he got on with the one away and came home on a fouler base hit. Six hits on the board for the Astros, four for the O's. As we mentioned last night, the, while the Strohs have an 11 and 25 record, the uh, the games have not been easy wins in many cases for their opponents. Eight of the last 12 decided by two or fewer runs. One run game, seven of the last 12. And he got him. So Gonzalez gets the out, seventh inning, one down. Oh, really nice job by Miguel mixing up his pitches once again. Good command of everything, throwing the split finger down in the zone. And Villar, very dangerous hitter, misses that one by about a foot. Tremendous drop on the splitty. Seven strikeouts this year, twice is, is his season high. Jose Altuve, been a contributor in this game. That'll go to second base. Jonathan Scopes got it, and he'll throw him out. And there are two down here in the seventh. Next week on the Mid Atlantic Sports Report, inside Prince Field, a slow start to his season. A look at the Orioles' abundance of left handed relievers. And Masson announces give their take on the best hitters in the majors. It's coming up Monday at 5 on Masson. Here is Fowler. He's going to take a little time here. Those outs came in a hurry. Fowler with a base at RBI third inning. He's walked, grounded out, stolen a base. And he will take the Gonzalez delivery for a strike. So the Orioles getting seven innings from Chen last night. Two runs on five hits. Six and two thirds so far for Gonzalez. Two runs on six hits. And that'll be fouled off, and the count will go to two strikes. Well, both Chen and Gonzalez uh, really aggressive in the strike zone with all of their pitches. That's why they're getting deep into the ball game and mixing it up consistently. Really, these hitters have not been able to make the adjustment, breaking the rhythm and timing. 0 2 delivery, and that one towards the hole, cut off by Machado. Had a reach on that one. <clears throat> Got him. And Machado fires the cannon, and here comes Porter. Gonna go down and argue this one at first base. L. Gibson, the first base umpire. A pretty close play. He's got his challenge left. He's gonna turn, look to his replay guy, chat for a moment, say, you know, I gotta come out here, I gotta wait, gotta look. Hmm. Yeah, pretty tough to tell. He's going to challenge. So he will challenge us. Mo Porter, the manager. Remember, you got to have clear evidence that the call on the field was wrong in order to overturn it. Yeah, about as close as you can get. And they rule that the the ball in the first baseman's glove doesn't have to close. It's just got to be in the back of the glove. The crew chief. Jeff Kellogg with the headset on. Here. Wow. I don't think there's enough to overturn it. First challenge we have had in the ball game. Back in New York, they take a look at the replays as the fans see it on the big board here. Understand why. Porter's doing this. The run's so tough to come by for his team, so anything that would oh, get yeah. somebody on. Oh, you have to do that in, in this type of situation. And it's a, you know, it's a good play just to break the rhythm of the opponents. You know, the starting pitcher throwing a good game. Everybody has to stay in place. One of the uh, things about the rule is the Oriole players are not supposed to come off the field. Now, some have. But the team, when there's a third out challenge, the team on the field is supposed to stay there 
until the ruling is announced. New York's made its decision. And we're about to find out. It stands. So the uh, challenge ineffective. The rule on the field stands. Side retired. Seventh inning stretch time at Camden Yards. A 2 1 Astros lead. tonight George Springer oh yeah he was called up a little while ago second major league home run of his career puts the Astros on the board and then Fowler comes through Astros have been struggling with runners in scoring position but they pick up a second run there Adam Jones his bat starting to heat up his third home run this week down in the zone hammers it to straightaway center remember Geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance what a pitcher's duel it has been Colin McHugh six innings four hits just the one earned run Miguel Gonzalez seven strong innings two earned runs and both of them still very manageable pitch counts so Miguel Gonzalez will hope for some run support here as the Orioles bat in the bottom of the seventh inning Hardy will lead it off Clevenger and then Pierce scheduled to follow back with you tomorrow afternoon Mother's Day game final of this series Chris Tillman against Jared Cosart one o'clock for O's extra and we will be on at 1 30 with the ball game. J.J. Hardy Orioles coming off a sweep in Tampa would love to have the opportunity for another sweep in the ball game tomorrow. If they can come back and get a victory here. And that will be taken down low. The Orioles have won five, lost five, and tied one in the series department so far this year. Hardy with a 1 1. That's going to be in the left field for a base hit. So Hardy's on with a single. And the Orioles have the potential tying run on the leadoff man here in the seventh. A nice piece of hitting right there by J.J. Hardy. McHugh has been so good with his cutter slider pitch, but this one stayed belt high, flat in the zone. And he stayed on it well. Bullpen action now for real. Tony Sip, Josh Z passing the. 90 mark 91 pitches thrown Clevenger a single and he is grounded out in at third Dominguez throw over trying to get some sign as to whether or not there might be a bunt here Clevenger to be followed by Pierce wouldn't think there would but let's see well, an opportunity now Clevenger good job using the whole field but a nice hole over there with Hardy at first base. He does square. He does drop it. And he had to play it second. Fell down. He's not going to get anybody. Oh, a tough break right there. And a good one for the Orioles. McHugh had a play at second if he had fielded it cleanly. Instead, it's a base hit for Clevenger. 
some light rain here in the middle of this ball game. Might have got that grass a little slick. He bounces off well, but you see the heels can't grip. Tries to make the play at first base. Just a little off. Nice job by Clevenger. He's a little frustrated back at the pitcher, and he recognizes the stumble. Off he goes, and the Orioles threatening here. Runners at first and second. So crunch time has arrived here in the seventh inning. First and second for the O's. Nobody out. Pierce coming up. Steve Pierce has drawn two walks in the ball game. He'll be followed by Jonathan Scope. And we'll see how Buck Showalter wants to play it, but that's going to have to wait as the visit to the mound. We're going to talk strategy. Brent Strom, the pitching coach. Coming out to have a word with his pitcher and entire infield. Orioles want to get into this bullpen. You see where they rank. Yeah, they have struggled. 6-1-4 earned run average. That's worst in Major League Baseball. Two or more earned runs in 21 of the 36 games they've worked in. Well, just making sure now everybody knows what they want to do here. As Pierce will come to the plate. And McHugh with two on and nobody out. Dominguez at third, Kraus at first. Both will play in. Trying to take the bunt away. Hardy at second. Clevenger with the second multi hit game of the year is on at first. Pierce. Takes a high strike. Looking again to Bobby Dickerson at third base. Orioles trying to come from behind here in the seventh inning, get the lead. Shift on against Pierce in the infield. Here's the 0 1. Off speed delivery out in front, 0 and 2. Oh, real slow there, 72 miles an hour. And good job locating it as well on that outer third. See the pitch track trying to work Steve Pierce away. Keep it away from the barrel of that bat. Runners get the lead. Here's the 0-2 delivery set up outside, grounded down to third and foul. Uh, Pierce will come back, stay at two strikes. Steve, uh, limited chances runners in scoring position came in three for 13, including one home run. It's his first chance in this ball game. Orioles in the game have stranded four, two of those in scoring position. First inning, though, where they've had the first two batters on. Here's the 0-2 delivery. Still throwing at that 92, 93 mile an hour fastball rate. Oh yeah, a good pitch, changing the eye level right there. Speed him up. Hard fastball right at the eyes. Oh, probably that slow breaking ball. One ball, two strike count. Set up outside. He's going to get that one center field base hit. Hardy will make the turn and be held. Fowler will get it into the cutoff end, and the Orioles have loaded him up with nobody out in the seventh inning. Pierce comes through again. That great at bat by Steve Pierce. Falling behind, no balls and two strikes. Fouled off a tough breaking ball and then reaches out. Really battled through this at bat. Nice clean single up the middle, but Fowler, good speed, closes on it. Bobby Dickerson with a nice hold there of J.J. Hardy at third. What a great chance for the Orioles. Fans up here. As the yard rocks in the seventh. And Jonathan Scope gets another chance. Scope is 0 for 2 in the ball game. And came away with one of the two big hits in the seventh inning last night. The seventh inning is when the Orioles got two runs for the difference in the game. 
Scope outside. Ball gets away. A run will score. Hardy crosses and the game is tied at two. Clevenger goes to third. Pierce to second. Well, he hasn't let many balls get away in this ball game. Actually, really good command throughout the game. Might be hitting that wall though as his pitch count nears 198. And he just yanks this slider down in the dirt. Real tough pitch to block. That's about three feet outside. Kicks away from Castro. J.J. Hardy walks home. First wild pitch of the year for McHugh. Now the infield is drawn in. Nobody out two on. Jonathan Scope with a 1 0 count. 2 2 game. And the off speed delivery is on the inside corner for a strike. Now the big breaking ball. He has commanded it well this whole game, locking Jonathan Scope up on the inside corner. Jonathan 8 for 25 with runners in scoring position. Well over the 300 mark. Here's the 1 1 pitch. And that's how you. Speed him up with a fastball, one and two, and he couldn't catch up. Yeah, slow him down, speed him up, slow him down, speed him up. He's been doing a good job of this the whole game. And Zach Britton warming up in the order of his bullpen. Let's go for the one ball, two strike count. Clevenger at third, Pierce on at second. Orioles with a chance to get the lead for the first time in the ball game. One, two. Scope down to third. Runner's going to stay. Dominguez makes the play. One out. One down. Marquegas coming up. Follow every Orioles game all season long with MLB.com. At bat, your favorite mobile phone or tablet can get it. That bat brings you baseball wherever you are. Look ins, replays, free MLB TV game of the day, classic games, and more. Download it. MLB.com at bat at the App Store or Orioles.com. And that will be it for McHugh. Porter coming out to get his starter who's done yeoman's work in the ball game, but he's going to leave either non decisioned or the losing pitcher in this game as he comes out with one down in the seventh inning and runners on at second and third. And the Orioles looking to get the lead with Nick Marquez coming up. Our Jiffy Lube pitching change. This pitching change should be quick, just like a Jiffy Lube signature service oil change. At Jiffy Lube, they get you in and out fast, and you never need an appointment. Ball game tied in the seventh at two. Impressive, but the Orioles got to him, man. He's responsible for two on. Yeah, pretty good outing here. Seven hits, a couple earned runs. They got to him at the end. A couple walks and just four strikeouts, but 101 pitches thrown. Really kept his team in the game. Now they go to that bullpen. Tony Sip, he's been in one game this year. Nothing to show for an earned run average. One and two thirds innings of work. A couple strikeouts. Got the fastball slider split. Pretty good fastball. 90 to 94 miles an hour. 
facing Nick Markakis. He's going to see some sliders mixed in there as well. Well, there he is, Vegas. The Orioles look to get the lead here in the seventh inning. Tony Sip. He asked for and was granted his release from the San Diego Padres organization. He was pitching at Triple A El Paso this season. 11 relief appearances there. Then coming over to pitch for the Astros, five major league seasons with the Indians in Arizona. And Sip. Go to work here as Dave Wallace congratulates Gonzalez so his night's work is done and if they can get another run here he'll be have a chance to be the winning pitcher. Yeah great performance by Miguel Gonzalez really quite a pitcher's duel both guys going head to head now they're going to the bullpens. The length of this inning may have had something to do with the decision there to already tell Gonzalez he's not coming back. So here's Nick Marquegas the infield will be drawn in. Marquegas two for seven against Sip. And the Orioles have a chance to get the lead for the first time. Left handers delivery to him and the pitch will be taken up high for a ball. So for Marquegas trying to get that go ahead off the left hander. Marquegas 257 off lefties coming in. Orioles one for four runners in scoring position. 1 0 delivery. Sip will get that one in there for a strike. Nick turns to chat to Jeff Kellogg. I'm just wondering how that could be a strike if the first pitch was in top of the zone there. The slider looked like it works itself away off the plate. Take a look at the pitch track both at the top of the zone and that second pitch actually off the plate. Just wondering which ones are going to be. 30 year old left hander. For the 1 1 delivery. And foul back. Pretty good fastball that over the top delivery there. Four seamer. Sip has been a strikeout pitcher for much of his career working out of the bullpen Arizona last year 56 appearances he had a three and two record four seven eight ERA out of Pascagoula Mississippi. Here's the one two delivered to Marquegas that's in the dirt good stop made by Castro. Holding the runner Clevenger at third, Pierce at second. First two ball games of this series, you certainly wouldn't know the great differentiation in the numbers and records of the two teams. They played it pretty straight up. Starter watching McHugh, those runners, his responsibility. Gonzalez hoping for a base hit, RBI, another run he could win. Very similar games. Uh, yesterday's ball game, Feldman and Chen went at it really well, and Gonzalez in the queue here. Two two to the hole, runner not coming. Oh no, Tuve makes a fine play, so not going on contact. Clevenger, they were holding him at third until the ball went through. It didn't, and there are two down. Yeah, just a tough read. See it through the infield. So Sip is going to work just a third of an inning here. His, his job was to get the left hander out now with Manny Machado coming up. Take a look, Marquecas. Altuve has to range to his left. Clevenger freezes. Saw Pierce. He was coming off hard. So Orioles still with a chance, but now there are two down.
Let's wait and see if the Orioles find a way to get a lead here. Yeah, trying to get to this bullpen. They have scuffled this season, but Josh Zaid recently called up three games so far. That earned run average up 5.40. Five strikeouts, though. He's got a good arm. Fastball, he can throw 92 to 96. A pretty good slider to go along with it. It is a power slider. He likes that pitch to the right-handers. Also has a split finger, and he will throw occasionally. Zeed last worked on Wednesday against Detroit, struck out Torrey Hunter, the strander runner. Came up AAA Oklahoma on Wednesday. He made his major league debut last season, worked in just, uh, well, he worked in 25 games last year, had an 0 and 1 record, only 27 innings worked. Zeed uh, in his sixth pro season, 27 years old. So, there we go. Two on for the Orioles as there has been since the inning started. In fact, they got the bases loaded with nobody out. The run that scored in the inning on a wild pitch. After that, ground ball out. Jonathan Scope, ground ball out. Marquecas. Now here's Manny Machado. He's got an 0 for 3. Zeed's delivery to him. And that's in their first strike. He really likes his slider. Right-handers are going to see a steady dose of it. And he even likes it. He'll get ahead with it. And then he'll try to bury it. Finish the hitters off. Seed 0 and 1 looking over to third. Clevenger the lead. High heat. 95. Yeah, real good arm there. Challenging Manning. Just running up to the top of the zone, maybe a little above it. There's a pitch track. Yeah, it was above the strike zone. 0 oh, to the count. Little miss inside. One ball, two strike count from Zeed. Orioles have not had a lead in this ball game. Bo Porter's ball club got on with a homer by Springer in the second. RBI Fowler in the third, two nothing. Orioles answered. Adam Jones home run in the sixth, and then the wild pitch run here in the seventh inning. And that will be foul back. The Orioles innings one through five had no runs on three hits so far in innings six and seven. They picked up two runs on four hits. Well, they've been a real good late in the ball game hitting team. So many come from behind win seventh eighth and ninth inning. Really been a strong point for them the last couple years. One two delivery. Mm. Two and two. Well, after working up in the zone throughout this at bat to Manny Machado, he tries to get one down there at 94. Just missing. Two balls, two strikes, and two down. Machado swings and misses. Wow. What a job by this Houston team to get out of the inning. The Orioles will get only one run, three hits, leave two in scoring position, tie game.
Carter's outstanding efforts, but uh, both are going to be non decisioned. Uh, Miguel Gonzalez for the Orioles. Yeah, best outing of the season so far. Great command of all of his off speed offerings. Really dialing it up against this Astros offense. Breaking ball there. Good split finger. Look at the finish on the end. Backdoor slider from Miguel. That nasty bite on the splitty. Miguel Gonzalez looking to get back on track. Seven strong innings, just six hits, a couple earned runs, a couple walks, six strikeouts, and just 90 pitches thrown. Just what the doctor ordered. Very efficient and got deep into the ball game. And now you get the back end of the Orioles bullpen. Zach Britton, 15 games, three wins this season, .89 earned run average, 15 strikeouts in his 20 and a third innings of work, and he has been dominant. Take a look at the lefties in this Orioles bullpen. Yeah, there's four of them, and Zach Britton has handled both lefties and righties so well. Just 129, 175 against them. Patton real strong against the lefties. McFarland trouble with the lefties, but handling the right-handers, that good two-seamer and changeup, and Brian Mattis historically very tough against the lefties, starting to get more consistency against the righties as well. Zach Britton will make his first career appearance against Houston as we go to the eighth inning. And Jason Castro will lead it off. He is struck out, grounded out, and will go after the first pitch and will foul it back. For Castro, he's gone six for 29 off left handers. 2 2 ball game, eighth inning. Threat of rain, heavy rain, not too far away. 0 1 count. The 0 1 delivery on the way, and that'll be fouled back. But not to fear, because Mike has told us that by 2 o'clock it should be all cleared out. So we could just have, <laughs> have a four hour rain delay, finish the ball game, have breakfast, and do the Mother's Day. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, the Orioles' bullpen last four games has been so solid. Just a 1 5 0 earned run average in their 12 innings of work. They have been so strong. Aaron O'Day out there, Ryan Webb coming along. Madison, real good innings. Another foul ball. So Castro keeps the count at two strikes. You see the rain again. It's been off and on, not heavy, but there are heavy rains in the area. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and that's going to go to left field. That'll be a base hit. So the leadoff man on here in the eighth inning, Castro. Rain may have affected this ball game, though, with one of the big plays in the game coming. Clevenger picked up a base hit in the seventh inning on a bunt that couldn't be handled by McHugh, the pitcher, who came in to field it, and his feet went out from under him on some wet grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Orioles would end up getting the run in that seventh inning that would tie the ball game up. He might have had a chance for the lead runner at second base on that bunt by Clevenger. That was Hardy who ultimately scored. Yeah, you see, we'll see if there's going to be effects of the wet grass here in this tight ball game late in the game. There are going to be some more bunt attempts. Dominguez will take it inside. Matt Dominguez with a base hit, one for three, five game hit streak for Dominguez, who has gone three for six in these two games. Another real good ball game. 2 2 in the eighth. Each team's got seven hits. Zach Britton. Real left hander with a runner at first. Castro. That ball to short should be two. Hardy. Scope. Pierce. Well, JJ Hardy made that look pretty darn easy, but that ball made a right turn on him. He was squared up on it. Ended up having a backhand. It hit the lip of the grass and the dirt. Nice solid underhand feed though and Jonathan scope that quick strong arm. Take a look here. Kicks off. He ended up backhand in that play. Didn't really tell from that angle. They make it clean. They have turned some fabulous double plays here in the last few games. Great key keystone combination right there. Former Oriole LJ Hose is going to come up. He will hit for Presley. Presley had an 0 for 3 in the ball game. Hose living here in uh, Maryland, coming back home. Started the ball game last night. Came up for a pinch hitter. He had an RBI sack fly and a single 
in the two at bats he had last night. Two down, nobody on. Britain against Hose. And the pitch just taken for a ball. Hose has gone seven for 31 off left handers. His only home run against the lefty. Here's the 1 0 delivery. And Hose over the top. 1 1. Yeah, just the uh, disappearing fastball trick right there at 93 miles an hour. Looked like it was going to stay thigh high and ended up being right on the dirt. Take a look at the pitch track. Pitch number two just disappearing under the bat of LJ Hose. Hose has had uh, four singles in his last four at bats. Of course, that sack fly didn't count as an at bat. One ball, one strike delivery on the way, and that'll be fouled off. So Britain gets ahead of him one and two. 26,264, 26264 on this Saturday night, Oral Park at Camden Yards, and they're seeing a good one. Another outstanding ball game up for grabs here in the eighth. Britain with a one-two. Chopper. Got to hurry up. Let's go. And no runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the eighth, 2-2. Two -two. Hang on for this one. Ball game tied at two as we go to the bottom after the eighth inning. Gary Thorne, Mike Bordick. Long ball, short, play it with a bunt, get somebody on and in. Now you yeah. all may need only one more. Yeah, that looks like this was what it's going to take. Uh, some small ball here, situational hitting, looking to get the bunt down. The grass is wet. We've seen the effects. McHugh uh, landed on his backside on a bunt attempt from Clevenger and ended up sparking that rally for the Orioles to uh, tie the ball game up. So they're relying on the bullpens, executing the pitches, and see who's going to come up with a big hit. I had a feeling this Houston series would not be easy despite the Houston record and it's turned out that way. It sure is. And their starting pitching has been solid this season. And that's really what they've used to stay in the ball games against the Orioles. I mean, Feldman yesterday and now McHugh today. The Orioles having a hard time. They're looking for the big hit, though, once again, late in the ball game. And there's one by Cruz. It is way. So much for the small ball when you have Nelson Cruz hitting his 10th home run of the season. You make mistakes to him and he is going to make you pay. This one up and out over and he destroyed it to center field. The Orioles offensive charge so far this year is right there. 10 home runs 30 RBIs for Nelson Cruz. And the Orioles have their first lead of the game, three to two, on the first pitch in the eighth inning. And here's Adam Jones, who delivered a home run of his own. His last at bat. He lifts it to left field. That ball is deep. 
at the wall. Hose is there to haul it in. Well, let's take a look. Nelson Cruz, his home run swing, and he has been so hot for the Orioles. It's like a little slider hovering in the top of the zone. That's what they call a cement mixer, and he gets on it. That front foot down, hips and hands coming through at the same time. And he is a strong man. Straight away center field for his 10th home run, and that is a go ahead home run. Second home run surrendered by Zeed and uh, just four innings pitched. Pitch will be taken for a strike. Here is Matt Wieters. Wieters 0 for 3 in the ball game. So the Orioles, with the flip of the calendar, found the long ball again. Tommy Hunter, the Oriole closer, now getting ready for the ninth inning. Orioles three runs, eight hits. The Astros two on seven. That ball stroke to center field. Fowler's there, and he's got it. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Baltimore Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Baltimore Orioles. And this is going to be another one-run ball game. Mm. Here is Hardy, a single, a run scored, one for three in the game. Zeed's getting tagged here, even on the outs. And the pitch will be taken for a ball. So Zeed with that pitch to Cruz becomes the pitcher of record for Houston and Zach Britton to the Orioles. 1 0 count. And on the outside corner for a strike. Nelson Cruz, who said in spring training it could prove to be one of the big pickups in Major League Baseball this year. And so far it has been. To center field, Fowler will put it away, and that will do it. One run, one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base. Cruz hoping this is the game winning RBI. We suggest you buckle your seatbelts, give an extra tug on that strap. It's the ninth. To you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at Southwest.com. Nelson Cruz, the smile could be a game winning smile as we go to the ninth. Making those Cruz t shirts uh, more popular. Fan favorite here. He has been so hot offensively for the Orioles. Mr. Consistent. 10 home runs on the season. Tommy Hunter now comes in the ball game. 11 saves this season. That's most in the American League. Got that one win as well. 3 2 9 earned run average. 13 strikeouts in his 13 and 2 thirds innings of work. He would love a clean inning here. Tommy has not had a 1 2 3 inning. Despite the fact he leads the league in saves, he has come on and when there's been an out or two in the ninth and gotten a save and not let anybody on, but not a one, two, three. He wants one right here. 
Springer at the plate a double a home run and he is struck out and the youngster will take the pitch outside for a ball. Orioles have not lost a ball game where they have led after eight they are 16 and 0. They have the eight and three mark currently in one run ball games. 1 0 pitch and that'll be top five. Break the ball right there from Tommy Hunter. He is really starting to establish that pitch as one of his better. He's throwing it for strikes and he can also use it as a strikeout pitch. Comes up big. Of course, the 96 97 mile an hour fastball to go with it. David Lowe out in left field for the Orioles. 1 1 delivery on the way. Fires that one back. You got the three swingers here, the first two especially here in the ninth inning. Springer. And Carter, both who take tremendous cuts and are looking for home runs. Springer got his second in the second inning. There's the mark in the one run ball games for the Orioles, third best in the league. And he got him, blew it by him on a pitch that was towards the outside part of the plate. Yeah, great movement here. Take a look at the pitch track working down in the zone. That late bite. That is a big strikeout pitch. Couple curveballs up in the zone. Drops this one at the bottom. Springer over the top of it. Big first out for Tommy Hunter. Here's Carter. Chris Carter, an 0 for 3 in the ball game, 1 for 7 in the two games. That a home run last night. And gets him to swing it a pitch away, and that's what he will do. Carter is one of those hitters who you may not need to throw a strike to. No, it just put, it seems like you put a little bend and it has problems with it. We've seen a lot of breaking balls, some weak fly balls in this ball game. That just that's a 90 mile an hour cutter. 0 oh and 2. Zach Britton's got a chance to go 4 and 0. Oh. If the Orioles maintain this lead, Zed would have his first decision as the losing pitcher in this ball game. And Hunter, of course, going after yet another save. Grounded towards the hole. That is a base hit. So Carter is on with a single with one down here in the ninth inning. Well, not a terrible pitch from Tommy Hunter to the breaking ball. Down in the zone, but Carter gets wood on, finds a hole. We will get a pinch runner to get some speed in the potential tying run. Marwin Gonzalez will come on to run. We're in the ninth inning. Orioles have a three to two lead on the Cruz home run in the last half of the eighth. Here's Mark Krause. Krause has an 0 for three. In the ball game, Krause has faced Hunter once, 0 for 1. Fouls that right straight back. Some ball games here of late, as far as tightness is concerned. <laughs> and the Orioles trying to win back to back series. If they get this win, I guarantee them a victory in this series with the final game tomorrow. Missed inside, one ball and one strike. Pretty good pitch, though, Tommy Hunter. That hard cutter he throws. A lot of times he can get some weak contact in the lefties as it runs in on the hands. Fernando Rodney with 10 saves for Seattle, second in the league. Tommy first with 11. 1 1 is put in the air foul. So Hunter gets ahead on the count. One ball and two strikes on Krause. What's at stake? The Orioles have a chance for a five game win streak. They've not had one this year. In fact, this is their first four game win streak. They could go to six games over 500. They've not been there this year. Here's the one two. That one drilled. It is foul. Left that one up in the zone. That is a danger zone with two strikes. Bounce a couple home runs this season. I make those mistakes when you're that far ahead, one and two, and bury some pitches down in the zone, or at least waste one up in the zone, up and out of the zone. Gonzalez off first base, down to first and foul. 
Kind of slow him down a little bit with the off speed pitches. Don't be surprised Tommy Hunter lets one go here 97 98. This will be the sixth pitch of this at bat. One and two the count. Gonzalez off first. Up high. 96 mile an hour fastball. The two ball, two strike count. I don't think anybody's left the ballpark tonight. Orioles behind 2 0, coming back, getting it tied up in the seventh, going ahead in the eighth, now trying to put it away. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way, and it's outside. Three balls and two strikes. Oh, good try right there. Change up from Tommy Hunter. Now he's got to come up with a big pitch. See the pitch track really aggressive in the zone. Some good waste up and outside, inside. Tommy with a 1 0 record and a 1 for 1 in saves. Lifetime against Houston. Clevenger is going to go out to the mound. Well, we got to make sure you're on the same page. Tommy Hunter's got a pitch in his mind. He's throwing him everything right now. Tommy Hunter wants to have full conviction of both he and Clevenger. And make sure. Three two runner not going. That ball is going to go to right. Nate Marquez is going to have to chase it down. Great speed Gonzalez on his way to third. They're going to hold him up at third base. Runner will go to second with a double. Krause gets a two bagger. There are runners at second and third, one away in the ninth inning. Well, Tommy wanted to throw that breaking ball, but he left it up at the top of the zone again. Krause had a couple good swings on some elevated breaking balls. Take a look here. I mean, this one at the top of the zone. He just goes out and gets it, and hammers it down that right field line. Runners at second and third. So Dallas Kutcher will come on to run at second base. He represents the potential go ahead run now. And coming up will be an opportunity. The infield is drawn in. Villar has had a, a single and a run scored. One for three. Orioles up 3 2, but Houston. Knocking at the door. Hunter's pitch will be fouled back. Millar just trying to drive it somewhere to at least get that run in from third base and keep this ball game alive. A base hit could score two. Cruz got the homer that put the Orioles up. But that being the game winning RBI now being threatened. Troy Patton, second time up in the bullpen. 0 1 is going to come inside. One ball, one strike count. But Showalter, who was sitting now pacing, Bo Porter's team battling. Said today, we may have lost 25 games, but we haven't stopped fighting. But a long way to go. We got kids who got some careers on the line. We battled. One and one. Pitch. Oh, good pitch. Call the ball. Two and one. 27 miles an hour. Probably his best fastball velocity wise and location hit the glove of Clevenger pitch track showing borderline pitch in there. Oof. So close. 2 1. Villar waiting. Villar chopper. Runner is coming. Play going to come at the plate. They got him in a rundown. Clevenger chasing him back. Just put the tag on. They do. And a timeout immediately called for an enormous out as Jonathan Scope made the off balance throw to Clevenger and got the runner who was going on contact. Yeah, real big play by Jonathan Scope coming up big, showing his maturity at such a young age. Chopper here, aggressive in on it, recognizing the runner going. Quick snap throw. And he gets him in a rundown. Beautiful play. He's got to be heads up now. Dallas Kuchel, he, he he's a uh, pitcher. So yeah. there could potentially be some problems out there. And now he's at third base. 
Can Tommy Hunter work his magic? There are two down. Altuve, top of the order, single to walk, fly it out, ground it out. Runners at second and third. One more out, the Orioles win. Two down and the delivery. And that is taken outside for a ball. Great play by Scope. That was not an easy throw to make. No, it really wasn't. I mean, he had to come in and make a play where he was heading towards the third base dugout. Not a lot of momentum heading in, and it had to be a one time type play. Got the strike into him. That's the decision you make if you're the Astros. Are you going to have that runner go on contact? Only one away. He didn't have to run. You can wait and see if it goes through. They decided to go on contact, and he didn't get very far. And Dallas is only halfway down the line. Hunter with a 1 1 delivery. 2 and 1. Oh, good try right there from Tommy Hunter and Clevenger working that outside corner with the cut fastball. Altuve and 0 for 1 off Hunter. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Altuve jams it. That's going to be a base hit. Ball game is tied. Kucho coming to the plate. He'll score. The Astros have the lead. A two out, two RBI base hit by Altuve, and it is a 4 3 Houston lead. Now, take a look at the pitch here. Breaking ball, staying in the middle of the plate. Altuve, well, he's an all star uh, for the Houston Astros. He stays on this pitch and comes up big. A clutch base hit. Both runs score, and he hustles on into second base to get himself in the scoring position as well. Buck Showalter is on his way to the mound. The grounds crew has come to the position with the rain starting to build up. And that will be it for Hunter, who has a blown save, and the Astros have a 4 3 lead. The rain really starts to come down. He's been in three games since returning to the Orioles. 386 earned run average. Had the one strikeout in his two and a third innings of work with four hits given up. Well, this is not going to be a pretty ending in any sense. Last outing, Sunday Twins, third of an inning. And not a lot of pitching, and it's pouring. I mean, it is pouring, and it's expected to continue raining. For some time now that it's started, fans are leaving. They're going to continue to play. Runner on at second base. Here is Fowler, two down. Tommy Hunter out of there, two thirds of an inning. Couple of runs responsible for the base runner on, three hits, no walks, and one strikeout. And Altuve hopping around again at second base. If they're going to give him the stolen base, he'll take it. 
That's where Pat trying to keep him close. For Tommy Hunter, second blown save of the year. Two down, El Tuve with a big two RBI hit and Patton's delivery. Outside for a ball, wants a dry baseball. Won't stray dry for long. This obviously will make plays on ground balls, outfield running, all that even harder. It sure will. Fowler, the RBI base hit third inning, a walk, grounded out twice to third. 1 0 delivery by Patton, that one skips away. And the count goes to 2 0. No more reverting back to previous innings in baseball anymore like you used to do if you ended up with a rain delay and then the game couldn't be continued and all that. That ball is taken down low and he falls behind him 3 and 0 with Castro waiting on deck. And they're going to walk him intentionally. So Patton with the intentional pass for a space open here. Puts runners at first and second in the ninth with two down and Castro coming up. Fowler on. Castro a single, one for three, couple of strikeouts to get the lefty lefty matchup. And Troy can be real tough on lefties. Steps across his body. Just aiming at that front hip. Good sweeping slider. And it is right there. And he'll catch the inside corner with it. So the Orioles are going to bat in the bottom of the ninth inning, trailing by at least one. Patton to look back and the delivery. Breaking ball popped up. Tough to see. That one down to the Bermuda Triangle areas. And Lowe makes the catch and runs into scope. They're both okay. So David Lowe puts it away, but two runs score on three hits. One left on, bottom of the ninth inning. The Orioles trail by one. Stay tuned for O's Extra Post Game. This has been a nip and tuck game all the way, and it still is as the Orioles head to the bottom of the line. I'm not giving up yet, Tommy. The Orioles were down too early in this game, came back to tie it up, actually take the lead in the bottom of the eighth inning on a couple of home runs. Orioles still continue to hit home runs. Now they've got a chance in the, in the bottom of the night. They've got to pick up one run now to tie this game and maybe another one to win it. So I've just been told we're going to stay here a while. Now, usually it's about 30 seconds to promote the post-game show. But as we see the tarp going out on the field in a rain delay, now the Houston Astros lead the Orioles 4-3. Uh, to three, And the rain coming down very hard here at Baltimore's uh, Camden Yard. So obviously the game is going to be delayed. And it's going to take some time now as the rain, as Gary was mentioning a few moments ago, that the uh, forecast is really uh, for heavy rain right now. So we're going to go back upstairs for a few moments before we continue the rain delay. Let's go back up to Gary and Mike. 
All right, Tom, thanks very much. Tom and Rick will stand by with us here. We knew uh, forecasters had this one dead on. The schedule will be a window to play this game till about 10 o'clock. Then we were supposed to get thunderstorms, heavy rain until uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning, and it was just raining too hard to go on. It really was. I mean, it's coming down in buckets right now. Sheets, grounds crew really struggling to get that tarp on. And, you know, unfortunately, I mean, real tight ball game, real good ball game until the bitter end there. Tommy Hunter's kind of been living on the edge here recently, and then the Astros ended up coming with a big hit to get to him. Yep. Tommy, as we said, has not had that one, two, three inning, and that's the killer. When you, when you come on as a closer, and he, not only that, but usually it's been a couple of base runners who have been on base against him, didn't have that extra cushion of the two run edge that he's had in some games, and tonight just wasn't meant to be in that two out base hit, two run score. Yeah, it did. I mean, just a kind of hanging, breaking ball in the middle of the plate. Now, Tuve, you know, he is a really good player for this Houston Astros team. He's been an all star for them, and he's off to a good start offensively as well, and he knew what to do with that pitch. Not too much, stayed with it, drove it back up the middle. Middle and came up with a big hit for the Astros, which they haven't been able to do a lot of this year. No, they have uh, that three and eight mark in one run ball games. The Orioles here this month, as we've talked about, have found the home run ball again. It disappeared in the first month of the season. The people you expect to hit them, the Jones, the Davises in particular, the home run wasn't there. All of a sudden, you flip the calendar page, and the home runs have started bubbling up, and they had him this ball game. Adam Jones has had the home run, the home run that was picked up by Nelson Cruz, which was the go ahead. So it looks like the power bats are coming back. Yeah, it really does. I mean, they really started to get on a roll there in Tampa. A couple home runs there. And, of course, Adam Jones, the big shot. But Nelson Cruz, boy, does he get behind this baseball and hammers it straight away center field to give the Orioles the lead. But now what's next? The three-run home run. Yeah. You know, a lot of solo shots here recently. But it's great that the Orioles are getting that home run swing down. You know, they're starting to become a really well-rounded offense. They've won a lot of ball games this year without a home run. You know, just kind of passing the baton as Buck Show Walter and his team talks about and now the long ball is starting to be a part of their wins. All right. So we have a rain delay here. It is a 4 3 ball game. The Astros on top with two runs in the ninth inning. Tom and Rick will be back for an update in just a moment while we await the hope that we can get this game restarted. Lead the Orioles four to three, scoring two runs off of a Tommy Hunter in the top half of the ninth inning to put the Astros on top. Now in this game earlier, the Orioles had to battle back. They were down by a two nothing count, and the Orioles have managed a lot of home runs, like Gary was just mentioning. The fact is, the Orioles now have nine home runs in their last five games, accounting for eleven of their last nineteen runs crossing the plate. And Adam Jones, Rick, has, has been really good this week with a long ball. You know, and he's trying to stay up the middle of the field, and that's really what's nice about seeing these kind of home runs. He gets that fastball out over the plate again. We saw it twice in Tampa during that series at their one in both games and boom, a bomber to center field and this is what the Orioles seem to be using to get that offense going is the home run ball. Now Adam Jones comes up with that fourth home run straight away center field eighth inning of the game now tied at two. 
A Nelson. cruise missile. Huh? A cruise missile. A there. cruise missile. You got it again. <laughs> he gets a hold of that breaking ball, actually, on the outside part of the plate, and he just launches that into the bullpen out there. The Orioles now take a one-run lead in the bottom of the eighth inning, exactly what they needed. And we're hopeful to make it last, but so far it has not held up. You know, it's kind of interesting. When Cruz hit the home run, the thud on the bat, the ball coming off the bat, it was like an echo down Pratt Street. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he can hit. The, he can put a big charge. You see a lot of times they put that miles per hour that it goes out of the ballpark on the bottom left of your screen, 107 miles an hour going out to the left center field. There's not too many ballparks that are going to hold that. Now, when you go back to the uh, top of the ninth inning, the Orioles have a 3-2 to two lead. They're trying to close it out. Tommy Hunter comes into the game. And the situation in the uh, ninth inning is this. You've got a, a George uh, Springer strikeout, and then Chris Carter gets on with a single, and then uh, Kraus with a double. So you got second and third with one out, and up steps Jonathan VR, and VR takes yeah. to a throw. Yeah, Villar, you, you know, this is usually when Tommy Hunter somehow manages to work his way out of trouble, and he gets the chopper to second base. Jonathan Scope comes up with a quick throw to home. They get the rundown. A lot better use of the rundown than before. They get that tag. They tag that out. And then all of a sudden, Altuve comes up. He drives a breaking ball to right center field. No way that Adam Jones is going to get him at home plate. He was running on the play. So now, there was Houston takes a two, a one run lead, but scored two runs in the top of the ninth inning. Now here's Tommy's Hunters on line. Two thirds of an inning. He allowed three hits, uh, two earned runs, no one and one strikeout. So basically, you know, the situation was, again, Springer strikes out. You got Carter with a single to left, the double by Kraus. You had the rundown, which you just saw. Then Altuve's two-run single. Troy Patton came intentionally walked Dexter Fowler, and then Castro fly to left to end the inning. And Houston took the lead then by scoring two runs there in the top half of the ninth inning. And look, the Orioles have played a lot of close ball games yeah. all season long. One run and two run games. And obviously, they still got a bottom of the ninth to play here. And, and you you just sort of think that the Orioles, are, they, they play these like intense games right. that you never want to leave your TV and you never want to leave your seat because of what happens. Well, it, you know, it's it's Tommy Hunter because, you know, we've all seen him go out there and just blow people away. And he's got that 97 mile an hour fastball and then he mixes in a pretty good slider at the same time or a cut fastball, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, we're working the bottom third of the order right now after one out and you're kind of hoping that Tommy can get a hold of himself and go one, two, three. But as usual, I mean, they find some way to get those hits and I just quite can't understand how Tommy can get hit so easily in all of these ball games. how he always seems to be pitching in trouble. He's got such really good stuff, you know, but uh, it, it just works out that way. And then again, he's right on the verge of working himself out. He gets the chopper to second base. Scope makes a good play. The defense holds up for him. And then, you know, Altuve, he is a great contact hitter, not a good contact hitter, a great contact hitter. And he catches a hanging slider and hits it to right center field. And it was just a matter of time, I guess, before Tommy he just can't keep doing this because it's going to catch up with him. You know, he's got to find some way to get through. I mean, there's a lot of guys with lesser stuff that get through innings, and Tommy just has way too good of stuff. Definite closer stuff, no doubt about that. But too many people on base all at one time, I don't understand it. Now, in case you tuned in late, missed the early part of the game, Adam Jones had a solo home run to get the Orioles back into the game. They were trailing 2 to nothing. Colin McHugh with a bases loaded wild pitch tied the game up. Nelson Cruz with a home run his 10th and 30th RBI. I gave the Orioles a 3-2 lead. Earlier in the game, George Springer hit a solo home run for Houston. Dexter Fowler had an RBI single. Then you saw the Jose Altuve two-run single to put Houston on top 4-3 to three in the top half of the ninth inning. Nick Marquez did extend his hit streak to 17 games. And Miguel Gonzalez worked a seven strong innings of six-hit baseball. He allowed two earned runs. Zach Britton pitched the eighth, allowing one hit. And then Tommy Hunter had the tough time there in the uh, ninth inning, surrendering the two runs. Now, it's uh, about 10-10, about 10 30. Gary and Mike will be back to update you on the, the, the latest on the tarp covering the field and the rain coming down here in Baltimore. We're going to return you to alternate programming, and we'll be back around 10.30 with Gary and Mike to update you on this rain delay from Baltimore.
completed his warm-ups in the bullpen. The field is ready. The Astros are taking the field, and we are set to go to the bottom of the ninth inning. How we got here, the game was tied at 2-2, eighth inning. Nelson Cruz led off the eighth with a home run, his tenth of the year. The Orioles led 3-2. Went to the top of the ninth inning with one down. It was Carter delivering a single. Kraus delivered a double. And then the two RBI base hit by Altuve. It came with two down, driving in the two runs that have given the Astros the lead in the ballgame. Right, here's a look at Anthony Bass. He's been splitting the uh, eighth inning and closer role this season with Chad Qualls. Right now in 14 ball games, 4-2-4 earned run average, has a couple saves and two opportunities. Four strikeouts, four base on balls, pretty good arm. Fastball can get up to 96 miles an hour. Really likes his slider. It's hard, 84 to 88. The opponent's hitting 215 off him overall. Does have a change as well. He likes to throw that to the lefties. So the fans who remained all get to move down to the front and uh, see whether or not the Orioles can pick up their first win when they have trailed after eight. The Orioles are 0 and 13. And something, of course, the Astros have not been able to do much of, and that's come back in ball games. But they have done it in this one. Orioles have uh, home runs from Adam Jones, his fourth of the year, the tenth picked up by Cruz. The other run scored by the Orioles in the seventh inning came on a wild pitch for the Astros. They jumped out to a two nothing lead. Springer's home run came in the second inning. RBI base hit in the third by Fowler, and then those ninth inning runs to get the lead again. Well, Bass has to go through the bottom of this order, and tonight Clevenger's picked up a couple base hits. Pierce staying hot, two walks and a base hit. The bottom of the order has really come up big recently for the Orioles. Clevenger looking to find a way on, put some pressure on Bass and the Astros. Anthony Bass, who is 26 years old from Dearborn, Michigan, now lives in Trenton, Michigan. He had. To has had only one save at the major league level prior to this year. Hasn't pitched a lot at the major league level. Was with San Diego over the last three seasons and then uh, acquired in a deal by the Houston Astros this offseason. So we are ready to go. Bo Porter's team looking for their 12th win. The Orioles have a four game win streak on the line. Bottom of the ninth inning. Here is Clevenger as this game is picked up after the rain delay. And Bass's delivery to him will be chopped foul at the plate. First strike. A good pass at 94 mile an hour fastball right there from Clevenger. Clevenger has faced Bass before, two for two against him, with a couple of RBIs against the 26 year old right hander. 0 1 count on Clevenger. Two base hits in the ball game. Clevenger will foul that one away. And the count goes to two strikes. 55 minute rain delay. Amazingly, it uh, stopped raining completely for the moment. Tommy Hunter surrendering the runs. Uh, two runs, three hits, two thirds of an inning with a strikeout. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way. Clevenger got jammed. This is going to be a tough play off the side of the mound. Dominguez. Everything's easy for him. He makes it look pretty darn easy, but he got a good kick actually off the side of the mound, kicked back towards him. If it had stayed true and straight, it would have been a real tough play for the shortstop. Kick back over to Dominguez. One time transfer. Strike over to first base to get Clevenger. So one down. Here is Pierce. Two walks and a single. He's hit successfully in his last five games now. Bass's delivery to him, and the pitch will miss outside for a ball. Tampa Bay got a seven to one win over Cleveland. Bedard. Former Oriole Eric Bedard had a great outing. Six innings, no runs, one hit. Wow. And a swing and a miss. McAllister took the loss. Loney had a three for four with two RBIs in the ballgame. Got a bunch of. It's the third 
one hitter. Two yesterday and one today. Yeah. One ball, one strike count on Pierce. One one delivery. Put up in the air to left. Pose is there. He's got it, and there are two down. Two away here in the bottom of the ninth. So that will leave it up to Jonathan Scope. Milwaukee beat New York 5 4 today. K Rod got his 15th save in that one. Jonathan Leroy went two for four, home run, two RBIs in the ball game for the Brew Crew. Orioles started the day half game ahead of the Yankees. Two down. Scope with the 0 for 3. And the pitch from Bass is outside for a ball. Right now, Josh Zeed could be the winning pitcher in this game. He worked a third of an inning, did give up the run, the home run to Cruz, that at the time was a go ahead run. One strikeout, one hit. Hunter could be the loser. Down the line and right, and that will be out of play. One and one. Bass doing a nice job working that fastball, real firm fastball, 94, 95 miles an hour, not leaving anything over the heart of the plate. The Orioles hitters. Talked about Ortiz heating up as the weather dies. Well, in Texas, where it's still warm, Boston's got an 8 3 lead in the eighth inning. Ortiz, two for four, including the home run. One ball, one strikeout on Jonathan Skilt. Bass's delivery to him, check swing, strike call. I think on the pitch and not the swing. Yeah, see Buck Showalter saying it was down. Take a look on the pitch track, it is down. Below the pitch track box. One and two the count. And that will be a heater up and away 96 miles an hour. Two down, two two count, bottom of the ninth. Scope waiting, a chopper. It'll go towards short. Villar, no play. Orioles keep it going. An infield single for Jonathan Scope. Turn this lineup over. Jonathan Scope, tough pitch to handle. Another one at the bottom of the zone, just off the end of the bat. Take a look here. He reaches out, battling here, putting in play. Good things can possibly happen, and it does for Jonathan Scope, finding a way on base. Villar can't come up with the bare hand attempt. And Nick Marquez is one of the hottest hitters in the game. Steps to the plate. So Marquez, who is one for one off pass, represents the potential. Winning run in this ball game. Scope the potential tying run at first base. Marquegas already a base hit, one for four. 17 game hit streak for him. Bass with two down. Outfield very deep, covering those gaps. They deliver to Marquegas. He'll get a base hit into left field. Oh's coming over to get it. Scope will stop at second base. And with two down for the Orioles in the ninth, two singles. Bass just throwing the fastball, keeps pumping it in there. Nick Markakis, veteran hitter, recognizing that, jumps all over the first pitch fastball here. Out over the plate, stays on it. Picks up another clean base hit. Keep this two out rally going here. So after the 55 minute rain delay, the Orioles have come back. They get two on with two down. The Orioles use the lights out delay in Tampa to come back and win a ball game. Yeah. When they won by a score of three to one. Doing damage after the lights came back on. Now the Orioles with a chance here. At least to get the run in from second and keep the ball game going. Manny Machado 0 for 4. Bass checks the runner. And will miss outside of all. 
Well, first slider he's thrown. Now he's getting in a little bit of trouble. You might see that slider come into play more often. One oh the count. Scope trying to get a big lead at second. Pitch will be up high. They want to check he didn't go around. Take a look here. Firm fastball man he wants it but no he holds up. The Orioles making a gallant effort here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Bass with a 2 0. And that's outside. And the count goes to 3 and 0. So Manny Machado working to count to 3 and 0 with two down. Delman Young is waiting on deck. He the pitch track everything away from Manny. 3 0 delivery. Walked him. The bases are loaded. And that will bring the pitching coach, Brent Strom, back out to the mound to talk to his closer. There's nobody up in the bullpen. It is Bass's game, but he's loaded him up with two away. This ball game just does not want to be put away. No, it sure doesn't. I want to make sure uh, what the game plan is against Delman Young. Get him back on track after a couple base hits. Delman Young's career pinch hitting numbers 276 with an RBI and a couple doubles. Not going to add to those numbers here. David Lowe would come on to play in left field for Cruz in this spot. So Lowe would be due up. He's not going to get in at bat. And Delman Young will pinch hit for him. Base is loaded, two down. Base hit could win this game. Down the other way and foul. Aggressive cut there from Delman Young. First pitch fastball. Nick Marquette is out of second base, getting a good secondary lead. Young has no numbers against Bass. The runs that matter, Jonathan Scope at third, Nick Marquecas at second. Manny Machado is also at first. The other two come in. It's over. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Big cut. Pitch up in the strike zone 0 and 2. Oh, old slider there. He stayed on the same plane, acted more like a cutter. But good velocity at 87 miles an hour and just enough movement on the end to keep it off the bat of Delman Young. Bass has surrendered three home runs in the 17 innings work coming into this ballgame. Rally caps on. Here's the 0-2 delivery to Young in the dirt. <laughs> How about that for a pickup by Castro? That's a tie ball game if that gets by him. Yeah, real good block. A hard pitch to 88 miles an hour. Just trying to fight to get it down in the dirt. Castro prepared for it back there. Slid over well. Take a look at him dropping to his knees, getting that glove down. Making a good pick. One ball, two strike count. Bass delivers to Young. That's down. Again blocked. Again, Castro kept it in front of him. Two and two. He might have got a help by the umpire right there. That hit off something hard, a shin guard of one of them. Yeah. Just killed it right behind. Looked like it was going to kick away clean. Take a look. Spikes the slider once again. And it kicks back. It did. Yeah. Caught the umpire's shin guard. That would have gone that. to the backstop. Tie game that goes by. Two ball, two strike count. 
Again to Young. A chopper to the middle. And it's going to be a tough out. And I'm getting ball game tied. Dalvin Young gets an infield single. Great effort by Villar. Jonathan Scope will score. And it is a 4-4 game. What a great at bat by Delman Young battling the whole way through. Finding a hole up the middle. Villar out there showing the good range as he ends up way over by second base. Delman Young flying down the line. Take a look here. The chopper up the middle. Good jump by Villar as he fields it. Delman Young beats it by a half a step. See the effort here. Running very well down that line. Five RBIs for Delman Young. One more. And the Orioles can put it away. Nick Marcakis is the potential winning run. Adam Jones has had a home run in the ballgame. One for four. Two outs. Jones will pop it up. In the infield at second base. Altuve is there. And he's got it. And free baseball for all. We go to the 10th. So the Orioles here in the bottom of the ninth inning will pick up one run on three hits. They will leave three on base. And it is a 4-4 game. to extra innings and for the Orioles great comeback after that 55 minute rain delay to get it tied up sure was once again with two outs the Orioles offense comes through Ryan Webb now into the ball game 15 games this season one and record four five oh earned run average continues to come down Ryan Webb really pitching well as of late 14 innings of work 12 strikeouts in the five base on balls he wants to get this offense back on the field for Ryan Webb, ERA last 13, 2.31. Three earned runs, 11 and two thirds innings. So Webb will come on and he will face the middle of the order. Delman Young stays in the ball game in left field after picking up that infield single to tie the ball game up. There you see his outing against the Rays, an inning and a third. With a strikeout and two walks, his last time out on Thursday. Teams in a ball game that really was a pitcher's duel for almost all of it, till we started to get to the sixth and beyond. Now have combined for 21 hits, four 11 and one for the Orioles, four 10 and 0 for the Astros. Webb's pitch and that will be taken for a strike. Dominguez, their third baseman, has had a base hit. He is one for four in the ball game. He's had the three hits and seven at bats in the series. A one pitch. Great slider right there from Ryan Webb. Starts him off with a good fastball, two seamer, and brings it back on the outside corner. And then sticks that slider down and away. Beautiful pitch. Pitch track, track showing. Nothing over the plate. Working the edges. 
Oh, two delivery by Webb and Dominguez has got another base hit. Boy, is he tough. So Dominguez is on with a single to lead off the tenth inning, and each team now with 11 hits in the ball game. Been impressive. He's had a pretty good offensive series against the Orioles. Had a tough pitch from Webb there. One out off the plate. Paul Clemens, who was just called up for the start of this series, warming up in the bullpen. LJ Hose taking a long time getting the signs from Pat Listash down at third base. Manny Machado will move in looking for a bunt. Hose, of course, with outstanding speed. Hose showed bunt, takes the pitch up high. He does not have a sacrifice this year. He's had only one at bat, came on as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning and grounded out. Yeah, Manny Machado uh, coming in hard on LJ Hose. He knows Dominguez's speed. Manny fields this ball Look for him to come up fire in the second base in tight right now. Squares again, trying to push it down to first. Oh, beautiful bunt. And the play will be made to first. Jonathan Scope over to cover. Clevenger gets it. Sacrifice for Hose. And the potential go ahead goes to second here in the tenth with one down. Well executed. We had talked about the small ball, how it might come into play in this ball game. Well, we didn't expect it to come into play in the extra innings, but LJ Ho is laying down the nice sacrifice bunt. Teammates appreciate it. Everything has come into play so far in this ball game. So that will bring up George Springer. Springer's had a home run and a double, and he has struck out twice. Had his eight game hitting streak snapped last night. The delivery and a pitch outside for a ball. Scope moving in towards second base as Dominguez had a pretty big secondary lead. And Scope trying to hold him a little bit closer without entirely surrendering that hole between first and second base. You want to try to shorten him up as much as you can. Here's the 1 0 delivery. And there's the Springer Cup. A real aggressive swing on a slider. Perfect location from Ryan Webb. Outside corner here. See it spinning. A late drop at the end. Good tilt on the slider from Ryan Webb. The Orioles, the next running ball games are 3 0. 2 and 2 for Houston. Great pitch. Kept it down and away. Got the corner with it. And a one ball, two strike count. And really locating that fastball well on the outside corner when he uses it. Off second base, Dominguez keeping an eye on Scope. That one in the dirt blocked by Clevenger. And the cow will stay at two and two. Well, it will be interesting, and we'll see how far this goes. But an extra inning ball game could have an impact on whether Chris Davis comes back tomorrow instead of Monday if they feel as though they need a fresh bat in the lineup. Still have to make that decision on who would go down if they do activate him. And you know, Chris is going to plea for it. He'll make his argument. He's come back from Bowie, where he played nine innings of first base in a rehab game. Two ball, two strike count. Got him. Taking just enough off that slider, 82 miles an hour. Springer, another healthy cut here. Take a look at the pitch track. This one catching more of the plate. But enough late movement as that drops right under the bat head. Good pitch from Ryan Webb. We've not seen Marwin Gonzalez at the plate in the first two games. He came on as a pinch runner. For Carter. So one of their home run bats out of the lineup, Chris Carter. And uh, he did come around to score when they picked up the two runs in the ninth inning to take the lead. 25 year old out of Venezuela has played for Houston at the major league level, a part of each of the last two years. This will be his first at bat in the ballgame. Runner at second, two out. And that pitch by Webb is in there for a strike. Out of the zone, looking real good. Gonzalez, one of those super utility players, infielder, who's 
Made a lot of starts, shortstop, second base, third base, 152 games over the last two seasons with Houston. 0 oh, 1 count. Timeout was asked for by Gonzalez just as Webb was coming around. Guzman, Jesus Guzman is waiting on deck. He hasn't had a bat in this ball game either. 0 oh, 1 count. Dominguez the lead at second, and the pitch will be inside. 1 and 1. Hardy now with the left handed batter up, the shortstop holding the runner at second base. No breeze at all in the ballpark right now. 1 1 delivery on the way and fouled off. A little bit slider underneath the hands there. Ryan Webb. Not a lot you can do with that. If you can't, if you can't stay inside that pitch. Be able to put it in play very well. And it's the effects of that real good slider, that late tilt. I think you can catch it out in front, but it starts boring in. Gonzalez, a switch hitter, 286 from this side of the plate with his only home run. The other side limited at bats, three for six. One ball, two strike count. Dominguez still out there at second. And way up high. And the count will go to two and two. Well, Dominguez really getting a big secondary yeah. lead out there. Two strikes, two outs. He's he, going to be off on the swing. He was challenging Clevenger to throw on that one. <laughs> yeah, he got way down there. Two, two, two away. Outfield in a couple of steps. On Gonzalez, so any base hit will be a little closer to the plate. Webb wants none of that, and he wants the runner back. There you go. He recognizing that Dominguez getting way off there, getting his head a little bit, shorten him up. He's on a swing of the bat. He's going to be off and running. Webb, the fifth pitcher used in the ball game by the Orioles tonight. Gonzalez, solid seventh inning performance, two runs, six hits. Britton, an inning, a hit. Hunter had a blown save, two runs, three hits, two thirds of an inning. Pat, in a third of an inning, an intentional pass, and now Webb. And that one keeps the ad bat alive, just caught it off the end of the bat. Two and two. Yeah, that fastball was dive bombing right there, down and away. I don't know how he got a piece of that one. You see the pitch track working down, but wasted a couple up. And up and in there. Left-handers 267 off Webb, 225 for the right-handers. Here's the 2-2 delivery again, and another one foul back, and Gonzalez battling with this 2-2 count and two down. We'll see if it holds up, but extra innings have been kind to the Orioles since 2012. The Orioles have gone 27 and nine. In extra inning ball games. Yeah, they have been really good. That magical year in 2012 when they made it to the postseason 16 and 2 and yep. extra inning games. Two ball, two strike count. Gonzalez waiting. And he got it. So Webb gets a couple of strikeouts. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. The Orioles will try and win it in the bottom of the 10th inning. Leaders will lead it off.
Earnings bottom of the 10th, the game delayed going to the bottom of the 9th, 55 minutes. Nelson Cruz, solo homer in the 8th inning, Orioles lead. Altuve, Houston, two-run single, top of the ninth. Astros led. Delman Young, RBI single, bottom of the ninth, tie game. Hey, Ryan Webb and Clevenger talking it over. Great job there. Real good inning. <laughs> Talking about that fingers are putting down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Paul Clemens now comes into the ball game. Just recalled the yesterday from Triple A. He's been in four games, though. Second stint with the Astros this season. Four seven three earned run average, five strikeouts, four walks in his thirteen and a third. He's got a good arm. Four seam fastball rush up there to ninety five miles an hour at times. A curveball and a change to go along with it. He will face Matt Waiters. Matt has had an 0 for 4 in the game and 0 for 8 in the first two. Shift will be put on against him. Matt, of course, on the left side, 346, three homers coming in, 238 right handed, two home runs. This has been his side of the plate. And the delivery to him will be taken up high for a ball. Bottom of the 10th. Right back here with you tomorrow, which is almost today. One o'clock goes extra, 130 for the ball game, wrap up of the series. 1 0 pitch. Missed with it. Clemens falls behind, 2 0. Good patience. Although we saw Matt Wheaters hit a pitch up neck high out of this ballpark to win a ball game in the Pirates series. Right now, trying to look at one spot. Might be a little more aggressive, 2 0, though. Leaders, Clemens, knocks it down. Makes the play over the first base for the out. One away. That came back pretty hard. He barreled it up. He's right back to Clemens. <laughs> Can't get a clean ball. He threw the one that was in play out. He got another one. He dropped it when it was thrown to him. Now the umpire threw the next one out in the dirt, so he walks <laughs> it out and gives it to him under him. <laughs> so one away. Clemens' second stint with the ball club already this year. He, his last major league appearance was the 30th against Washington. Three in the third. One run. Second appearance ever against the Orioles. Gave up three runs in an inning last year. Hardy's one for one with a homer off Clemens. And the pitch for a ball. JJ Hardy with a single, a run scored, one for four. He's hit in the last four ball games. Most uh, people standing here to short, stop. The Lyle can't make a play out of it. That'll be an infield hit for Hardy. That's the third infield hit of the ball game for the Orioles. Yeah. Tough chance right there. For the shortstop Villar. JJ hit that one hard. Grass a little wet, skipping on there. Did a good job just to glove it. He thought it was in there. Came up. And now Clemens wanted that one. So Hardy's on with one down. Timeout being asked for. As the second base umpire saw something back along the wall there that needs to be taken care of. J.D. Rayburn. Don't quite know what it is, but. Somebody had a. Somebody had their. Uh, camera part of their phone on had a light on. Ah, taking the video. Just trying to get a photo to go on the air. <laughs> right. Trying to get one. <laughs> Clevenger, the two singles. And Caleb Joseph will get a start tomorrow. I have a feeling. <laughs> I think so. Long ball game for Clevenger. 
He rips it into the corner. Will it be enough? It is a fair ball. Springer's got to go over to get it. It's rolling around. They're going to wave him home. Bobby Dickinson, the arm's going. Relay front of the plate. Not in time. The Orioles win it. 5-4 in the bottom of the 10th inning. A single by Clevenger. Scoring Hardy from first base. Congratulations, you got the game winning hit. Now you're gonna get bruises all over your body. <laughs> well, we were looking for nicknames to have in baseball. We just had a suggestion from the truck for Wheels Hardy. What do you think? <laughs> oh, yeah, I like it. Heck yeah, there's a look at the pitch Clevenger hit. A fastball in the middle. JJ, good jump at first base, and he is striding now. He knows. He knows he's going to be sent the whole way. Bobby Dickerson, the aggressive send, almost leading him into home. JJ Hardy makes it in there, the game winning run. What a ball game as the Orioles had to come back twice. It is their fourth walk off win of the season. The Orioles now go nine and three in one run games and four and oh in extra innings. An amazing 5 4 victory. So they've guaranteed themselves the series win. They get a chance for a sweep tomorrow. Chris Tillman on the mound against Jared Cosart. Coverage at one on Masson. It was extra presented by Geico, followed by a game action at 1 30 on Masson and WJ. AC. Tonight's telecast has been a massive presentation. Tom and Rick, it is a better than happy recap. Those extra presented by PNC coming up right now. For Mike Bording and all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne from Captain Yards. A do a do.